This is PBA champion Kyle Troop, and you're listening to Straight Up Five with Johnny Petraglia Jr. As you know, JP Jr. used to be introduced as the sexiest man in bowling and now the world. But he doesn't have the best hair in the world. I do. Sorry, bud, but you know the deal. Pick it out. Fear the fro, baby. Welcome to Straight Up Five with Johnny Petraglia Jr. A hard-hitting in-depth, cutting-edge look into the world of bowling. This podcast will not only cover all things bowling, but will also give you a raw look into real-life issues. You'll get unfettered access into the mind of one of the most gifted bowlers of this or any other generation. So without further ado... Let's introduce you to the hosts of the show. Red Rob Rob Francois. Red Rob Rob Francois. Dr. Ocho. Dr. Ocho. And the incomparable Johnny Petraglia Jr. Johnny Petraglia Jr. Hey guys, welcome back to Straight Up Five with Johnny Petraglia Jr. I am your host, Rad Rob Rob Francois. That's absolutely right. Chuck Ritchie is in the house, the voice of Bull TV. Jerry Mars, what's going on, JM? All right, let's not waste it. Phyllis, hello. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, let's not waste any time. I am super excited to get this guest in. We're going to have like a half hour highlight video. So, you know, if we ever bring Belmo on the show, the whole show is just going to be a highlight reel. But uh, in any event, growing up a lefty as a kid watching PBA on ABC, John Mazza was one of my heroes, as well as Mike Galby and Parker and John, you know, Johnny Sr., all the lefties. Uh, but I'm, I'm super thankful to have this man on tonight. But before we bring him in, we must introduce my first co-host. He is the man with the golden mask. He is the resident doctor of Straight Up Five, straight out of Ochoville solo this time. It's the one and only Dr. Ocho. Good evening, sir. I'm never solo. I always got my army buddies with me, Ralphie and yeah. Louie. That was a great response. You're so you betcha. Always on the money. I don't yeah. care. And that's all ad lib people. We don't have no script. That's why I just spoke with improper grammar and said we don't have no script. Because I would have said we don't have any script if I was reading the script. Remember that, folks. And remember these. I also remember that the Steelers suck. That has no bearing on the show. And does that say the second Beef Leafy? Is that what your name is? Because I know exactly. you like Beef. My name is Beef Leafy. Beef Leafy. That should be my name from going forward. I'm going to redo Beef, the intro. We're going to get the art department on the phone. We're going to get a shirt that says, Thank you, sincerely, Beef Leafy. Also joining us is the man with the name of the marquee. He is number seven in your program, number one in your hearts. The sexiest man in the world, Johnny Petraglia Jr. What up, Jr.? What's good, everybody? Always a pleasure to be here. Reporting live from mom and dad's house the day before Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving. Happy, Thanksgiving. And happy Thanksgiving to everybody already in the chat. And we'll obviously say it again later. But it's been kind of fun. Spent most of the day helping mom prep and cook, which is something she doesn't usually allow me to do. But I tried to explain to her, you know, in the 12 years I've been living in Vegas, it's like I'm, I'm okay in the kitchen now. So what can I do? So she had me, you know, slice honey pasta. That was about it. <laughs> Didn't right. love to do anything else, but at least you got to do something, though. I mean, that's yeah, I got to do something to at least be helpful this Thanksgiving rather than just reaping the rewards of it. Nicole's in the house. Happy birthday, Nicole! 
26 today. Doesn't look at that. Oh, look at Darren Andretta popping in tonight. What's up, man? Hello, Darren. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to feed off of his comment before you go to the highlight real, real quick. But uh, yes. I'll go real quick, Darren, on this. And really I'm pretty sure that anybody in our age bracket, anywhere from ages, we'll say 30 to, you know, mid-40s, even 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 50 at this point, um, all have some pretty fond memories of watching this smooth as silk uh, left-hander throughout his years on tour, not to mention his uh, – extremely warm presence uh with not only the fans and, and the tv cameras together but just just a really really wholesome person i have a i know rob you got a shitload of questions for him i certainly have a bunch for him i mean so without further ado in the words of kyle troop uh i do we'll, we'll, we'll send it we'll send it back to you but yeah totally stoked to be here again let's take a look at the highlight package of john mazel He can capture his first title if he can slam home the strike here in the ninth frame that would take out Edwards. Anything less, Edwards can still win. Oh, please! Got his wish. Center of the lane have been much more competitive. The winner in this uh, final match will receive $20,000. John may uh, have some early tears. Why not? Two matches, but for John Mazza, wow. And Mike Edwards, remember, shot a 2-11 there in the final match. Yet he has to again be a runner-up to another non-winner who no longer has that category. 26-year-old John Mazza of the Montgomery in Michigan, and let's go back to New York now. And here's my colleague, Frank Gifford. From a little oil carry down, the scores got better. From nothing on the left, Ma's in a little trouble. Well, Mark Rob did it on our live telecast. And Bo, the man from Mount Clemens, he is thanking the great spirit. Wow, let's replay that, baby. All he has to do is shoot over in the 6-10 zone, knock out either the 6 or the 10 or both. He will win the match, shut out Mike Shady. Shady, the best he can do is 2-10. If Mazza gets 9 count, he will end with 2-13. As you see, a low-profile shot from the left side. I like that shot. And But Mazza didn't like that one. That's a winner. Oh. His first victory, a very emotional one in Florida. And didn't seem as elated in winning his second PBA title. And from Fresno, we go back to... Our swing is loose. He's having some fun on the championship round there. Mazza, I have a feeling, is talking to his fiance who he will uh, see you next week. I think he's taking the next couple of weeks off. Besides winning two out of three is uh, good enough, huh? And well, you won three in a row, Peter. you got to have your priorities. Time to go home and get a couple of other things to accomplish. So. Oh, what a year for John Mazza. This goes to show you, it can be done with a lot of hard work and effort, and if you seek the right advice and counsel, you too can be in the runner for Bowler of the Year. John Mazza with a game in the 260s. And he's happy, <laughs> needless to say. <laughs> that looks like we'll have plenty of time to chat with our newest champion here on ESPN. Fifth grade, Mazza with another win. The final outcome is all in John Mazza's hands right now. He can shut out Norm Duke if he just has two strong frames. Nine pins on the first ball to guarantee a tie, a strike, or a spare. He locks up his fourth title, requalifies for the Firestone, and the reason he has to requalify is he only bowled three tournaments last, has only three wins, and he wasn't a touring player last year.
Zelinski's glad to be back. Leslie won't be the only one in tears, believe me. Well, Anthony, see the tears starting to come, Chris. This is, this is an emotional couple. Watch John. Watch John. He'll have them. Why not? I agree. And put a new baby in his arms and look out. That's a million dollar guess. We a black dress and everything. The little house. There's our son right there. Got all of it telling himself, come on, let's just ease on into the 10th frame. John Mazza, my hat's off to him, boy. He never quit in this match. Hung in there, 216, a winner. Sensational final to a unique round robin match play format. Parker Bohm, the third, will finish second. John Mazza, first. And I'll tell you what, those two guys really put on a show. Furpo and Bob Learn as well. A really well, fun, all interesting telecast here tonight for Richmond, Virginia. When we come back, we'll wrap things up. Yep, he's got enough right now. He doesn't show up to the 10th place. And it's been since the 94 and that's been over traffic since John has won. So it's been a couple years, almost two and a half years. And that's too long as far as he's concerned. And the drought continues for Parker Bowen. Bowen, well, there have been a couple opens in the 10th frame on tonight's show. Tom Baker did it in his match against Mazza. Mazza does it against Dave Yentermont for the title. Right now, Yentermont needs to fill 15 in the 10th frame. This is what the PBA is all about. Exciting championship matches. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. He needs to make that. A little slow. He thought he had it. He thought it was going to hold pocket. Suddenly, he's looking at the score. If he doesn't get this, he's going to finish with 212. Maz is crying. Look at the speed. Doesn't happen. John Maza. John Maza wins, and boy, he is absolutely just sobbing. The hug between the two bowlers. Maza can't believe his good fortune. He hits your mind, can't believe that he split in the 10th frame. Ladies and gentlemen, please introduce the one and only PBA legend,
Mr. John Mazza. Good evening, sir. Thank you for waiting through that highlight package. Uh, it's good to have you here. If you would have won 10 titles, would have went 10 more minutes, but uh, you won no. eight. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, good to have you here, sir. Appreciate you being uh, here. Pleasure to, pleasure to be with you, fine gentlemen, this, this evening. And uh, the John Mazza crying show has begun. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, looking at those highlights, uh, Mr. Mazza, anything stand out as uh, any of your favorites? Anything in particular that uh, you hadn't seen in a while? We're happy to see. Well, I just happened to catch a few minutes of Bob's interview with you guys a few weeks ago, Bob Lern. And uh, he said, you know, he maybe had watched uh, his, his epic event in 96 in Erie a few times. I guarantee you I've watched everything you just showed, probably 15 or 20. Really? Nice. I don't know why. I just, it's fun to watch those things, but thank God for YouTube because there's so many things now that you can see that you, you didn't have the opportunity to see um, so many special events, not just the things I did, but the things that I saw others do, which I find incredibly still fascinating to this day because I started out as a fan of uh, the PBA tour. And that was the great inspiration for me. Um, and to see some of those things go back and go back in time into the seventies and late seventies and early eighties, man, you know, it's just, it's fun, you know, just to see, I mean, even your dad, John, uh, and, and some of the things he did. Um, so it's just awesome that we can get those, those moments in time brought back to us. It's pretty special. Absolutely. Jeff Riggles in the house has said he won his first regional title against you in 87. Um, welcome. Oh, someone shots fired already, man. Holy. <laughs> I, I wouldn't even say that because John Mazza, you could see yes. the showman about him too, man. Wow. Like, a, listen, everybody's beat me at least once. Trust me. <laughs> I got even a dry cleaner in Roseville that beat me once. <laughs> and you and beat they Parker. probably bring it up to you. They uh, buy yeah, right, and he didn't forget time. it. In fact, he made me sign the $20 bill into his deathbed. He probably put it in his pocket when he was buried. Bill Gardner, his name was. Rest in peace, Bill. And you beat Parker three times. I'm pretty sure if he saw you on TV, he wasn't happy to bowl against you. Well, the thing is, is that Parker had an uncanny knack of me be beating me all week long. Okay. <laughs> so I, I you got think, him at the uh, right time, basically. Well, listen, he wasn't just the, the Steve Nagy sportsmanship owner for, for many years because he was hospitable to me after all, you know, think about it. I don't know how to explain that. Honestly, yeah. you know, um, when we, we bowled each other the first time in Denver, and that was a funky week because we both, there was a shot outside and inside, which is very unusual. Usually one shot dictates into a direction. And uh, he was lighting it up, playing outside naturally, free rolling it. And I was throwing a blue dot uh, early in the week. And then I went into a yellow dot and then we pushed into the fourth arrow towards the end of the week, which I really got comfortable in there and uh, ended up blowing out and, and running away with it. We got to the TV show and uh, we both had a shot out and a shot in. And I'd always like to play in, and he was playing out. And uh, so what happened is he shot 250 against Shady uh, in the semifinal. And uh, so I get six balls. I try a few shots outside. I try a couple inside. I think the few shots I threw outside carried his shot down. I think that's what happened. And I had a great look inside. And I, I put the foot down, and, we, and that was what happened there on that one. Um, let's see now. The real interesting one with Parker, the second one was uh, when we bowled at uh, Arthur Ashe and the Dick Weber. So that was a really different event because, and they didn't get a chance to really describe it because it was happening so fast, but um, all four of us had a shot in the ninth and 10th frame to bowl for the title. I never, I'm just, it was insane. Wow. Parker came back, he, he got whacked the first game, Bobby bowled big. Uh, I beat Furpo 250-250. Furpo bowled against Learn, and they had a 240-250 match. Parker beat me in the the third game, but I had a strikeout in the tenth. I look to my right, and I think I look at Furpo and Bob are bowling. And they can Furpo can shoot 260, and Bob can shoot 250. Parker's shooting like 260. So I look up and I go, if I don't if I don't strike out, I'm going to go from first out. So I thank God I doubled, locked myself in. Ferps doesn't strike. Bobby gets the first hit, doesn't strike. Parker doubles and I'm bowling him. So now what I didn't know, they said, okay, we're going to bowl on three and four because they put two lane, they put four lanes in. AMF did a great tournament. And uh, AMF put up four lanes at the Arthur Ash. And um, so now I, they said, we're bowling on three and four. 
And I just got, you know, I bowled on one and two. I bowled three games on one and two because I liked my shot and did not like my shot on three and four. Did not. It was just hooking more. And I was like, okay. So we get into the match. And um, I think about the fifth or sixth frame, I look down the lane. Leslie's down there. I look at her. I'm like, <laughs> I'm finished second because forget it. Parker's got like double four bagger. And, um, you know, so he, he gets one and I, I think he throw he throws it a little soft splits and uh, almost made the split the three, six, three, four. What is it? Three. Help me, Johnny. The two, four, seven, ten. He left the two, four, seven, ten. cut it in. The, the two pin went across and just misses the 10 pin. Right. Yep. So I go, well, I got a shot here. Now I haven't had double, but I'm clean. So now I come up, I, I find a way, finally hit the pocket on the right lane, never hit the pocket once. I hit the pocket and struck in the eighth. So now I got like 137 strike up. So now he goes, he, he, he gets this, he gets the strike again. He's on a double and Mary goes off his Mary bone. And um, so his first wife, so, they look up and they got this massive screen at the Arthur Ashe Center and they're showing a replay. And Mary's sitting maybe a couple of people down from, from Leslie. She's going, yeah, yeah. And they're replaying this and he's just about ready to throw a shot on the approach. Okay. And everybody starts laughing. He looks, he looks at the screen. He comes back off, throws a shot, doink again, two, four, seven, ten. Oh, yep. So, I mean, he had me twice. Yeah. I mean, I literally dodged a bullet twice with him. You know what I mean? So I end up. Is that why they got no. divorced, JP? Do we know that? Is that possible? I mean, Say again? Was, is that why they got divorced? I mean, is that uh, is that possible? Like that, it was his first wife. So. My wife and I love Mary. We still do, and, and we love Parker, and we love Leslie and his family. They're all great people. So ironically, now they're both Leslie's. Yeah, right. Exactly. Oh, there you go. That's true. Yeah. That's true too. I want to add. I want to add something to that show for some of our sure. viewers that didn't watch the Dick Weber Classic. This was yeah. the the format that John's talking about. In case you guys haven't seen the show, was. They had all four guys bowling multiple matches at the same time, and it came down to total pins after, was it four games, John? Yes, that's what they did. That's right, Junior. They uh, we, we bowled – they called it round robin. The only time they did this, actually, was in the 1965 Tournament of Champions. They brought the format back, and that's where Jim uh, – I think it was Billy Hartwick. He won the Tournament of Champions at 65. And uh, they, this format was there was four guys on TV – each bowler bowled each other one time, 30 bonus pins. Right. And that's how they, and then the top two were the top two. And that's how they did it. And that's, and this the, was the, this was the same format, I believe, the year before uh, David Ozio broke Nelson Burton's four game record at 10, 10 50 by shooting 1080. And prior to Learn's 1129 uh, with the show that you were also on in Erie in 96, 96. Right. Yeah. So Ozio did it in 95, right after I won. And I was there because AMF had brought me out at the time I was under contract with AMF. And um, and they brought me in the show to do the MC. And then Gary Beck was a dear friend of mine. God bless him and what he's done for bowling. He's, if he's Absolutely. listening, God bless him. He's a super guy. And what he did for the sport and still does is amazing for the kids, too. I remember and, Gary. He had me on the sidelines, and I'm reporting. And Ozio's just – he's he's just throwing like God. He just – every ball is just pure off his hand. And I'm grabbing him after every match, and I got him. And I got Duke on the show. I got – uh, Walter Ray on the show, and I'm grabbing Ozio. Ozio's got his wife, his beautiful family, his daughters are with him. I'm like, okay, get over here. So we're talking every after his show. It was a blast. But yeah, Ozio lit it up that night. He was phenomenal. Thank you. Speaking of that show, the one thing that was missing on the highlight reel, and I have to mention this because everybody that watches our show knows I'm a, a bowling ball connoisseur, snob, whatever sure. you want to call it. Yeah. But, you know, obviously I've been tenure with Brunswick for as long yeah. as I've been alive due to you that. To, it was imprinted on your, uh, on your cheek when you were born. <laughs> yeah, but I'll tell you what, man. I was talking to my buddy Chris Schwartz the other day, and both of us the simultaneous were like, that show made me want to throw a, uh, a Warhawk. <laughs> and yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't crazy. see that red beauty going down the lane in, uh, in that highlight reel. But, man, that was um, – I remember that show like it was yesterday, and I still fall asleep to YouTube videos, and every once in a while they do pop up. As a matter of fact, I watched uh, – I want to say you were in Wichita. I think you were throwing an Avenger. That's what I fell asleep to last night. It was playing pretty deep. I think it was a one pin loss, maybe to Mike Edwards or something like that. But we, we bowled, uh, yeah, we, 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 that was around Indianapolis 99, last show. 99, last show. Thank you. Yeah, Mike and I, 
one pin game. Yeah, it was fun. It was on the tube last night. I was going to mention that in the in that in that highlight reel, a lot of the highlights playing open in the lane up, you know, being playing inside and you know, yeah. Even for the, the the casual fan now, they don't see that too often from well, I guess now they do, but like there was a time where, yeah. you know, maybe the OOs and even into the tens where everybody piped it around the five or the ten. Well, yeah. the lefties, I'm saying. And um well, you know you're what, watching you in the eighties and the nineties throwing well, over third arrow and well, in the eighties I was non existent. I didn't make TV unfortunately. I tried like hell but it didn't happen. I was just you know, we had, so we go back to 85 and your dad will remember all this because he's an incredible historian. And I'm going to go, I'm going to be, you know, second coming to that man with his, his knowledge and, and all the stories, which I still admire. I'd love to sit next to him and talk to him for the rest of my life. He's just incredible to talk to, not because of his accomplishments, just because listen to everything. I could, we're going to get into that in a minute, but I got to tell you, so we both on tour in 80, in the eighties, Lon Marshall was a lane man. So Earl left and you retired. And um, Lon, <laughs> Lon had his gimmicks, and he, he and what they were called better here, John. It's okay. A basketball. They would call it a basketball. They would put a distance down the lane, and it would be a hang spot. And if you had the right deal going on, your ball would look really good going through it. And if you didn't, you weren't going to get snot. And that's just really what it was. And um, so I remember one time, I, I vividly, you know, some of these things that happened. I was in 1985. We're in Garden City Bowl, Long Island. I missed the rabbit. And um, I was broke, sleeping on the wood benches at Garden City. I wake up at 530 in the morning. I'm one and two. Here's Jim Tabucci and Lon Oil in the Lanes for Friday morning. Okay. Now, I'm looking down the lane. I walk and I'm, I'm looking down there and I'm walking across the lanes and I'm seeing this blotch of oil about 35, 40 feet down the lane. And it looks like a round object. I'm not shitting you. I'm looking down there. I can't, what the hell is that? And I go, I go, hey, Lon, what the hell is that down there? I've never seen that in my life. I've oiled lanes by hand back at Fountain View when I was a kid growing up with the cross wiper. And, you know, I knew how to block it and, or, you know, blend it. I never did that. Okay. Yeah. That is, what is that? I feel like I make it takes effort it. to do that. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Come see me in, in Hartford and I'll show you a few things. I didn't go. I shouldn't have. I probably should have, but I didn't. I just, but there were some things that were going on back then. And, uh, and no disrespect to Mike Albee, who I have the ultimate respect for as a player, as a person. And, uh, but he had a gimmick and he figured out how to get through it and he could win with that. Now, your dad, was a great bowler, but at that time, you know, we yeah, didn't really see him. Yeah, and I'd have guys come up to me and say, I'd come back to Detroit and I wouldn't bowl so good. And Mike would win and he'd go, What's your problem? He's winning. Sure. We, you know, and I hear that forever. And then what happens is Lon Lon gets off the tour in 88. Here comes Lenny Nicholson. Now Lenny Nicholson, God bless him, was all about fair. He's like, I'm not hearing nothing from nobody. We're gonna put out a shot that's fair for everybody. I don't want to hear nothing from nobody. Okay. And what he did is he developed a pattern. They called it a Christmas tree. So it was multiple angles. So which means you might play in, you may play out, but you always had a look every once in a while. You know, I'm talking about starting in 1989. Every once in a while, we would have no shot, but most of the time there was a place to play on the lane. Maybe it was the gutter. Maybe it was the fourth arrow. Maybe it was in between. And that's just what it was. And I, that that helped a lot because I saw that things started changing and there was potentially a sense where somebody wasn't going to try to do something. But there were times that during that time period that really helped me was that one day we would play the fourth arrow and one day we might have to play the gutter. And it was perfect for my personality because I have, well, let's just say I have a, a short attention span and I don't want to sit there, you know, God bless Eric Forkel. Du, 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 and, and he just would sit there and pose like a perfect statue and beautiful bounce and just sit there all day. I can't stand that. I got to move around. I got to have some variety when I'm bowling. I mean, I want to play in, I want to play out. And that was fun for me, right? And, and no disrespect to anybody that wants to play a certain zone, but I just, I got tired and burned out after that. I was like, but once we started, I was enjoying it. Like, We're going to play fourth air today? Yes. Are we going to play the gutter today? Yes. Because everybody would be pissed off if the lanes were different the next day. And I'd hear them all barking and freaking did it again. They changed the game. And, and I'd go, got them. Cause I would just be ready for the, I was hopeful for an adjustment. I, I was like, thank you. So that was, was part of it. 
it's so funny because obviously, you know, with dad, I'm the exact same way. I'm either on the gutter with plastic or urethane or I'm in the fourth, fifth arrow. Yeah, well, I, I get a chance to see you both for the first time, by the way. I hate to interrupt, but oh. I watched you both. Say, I can't believe this. This is what I say about YouTube. It's so awesome. I'm just sitting there one day on my couch just last week. And who am I? I pull you up in a NEBA tournament. Who And the oh, guy you're going with, your partner. Alex Aguiar. My God, talk about a freaking stud. That okay. kid, let me tell you something. I took Anthony, our oldest, out in 09 to Vegas to bowl some of those high roller stuff in the summer, right? Anthony's like, I want to, I want to, I don't want to go to college. And my wife, you know, she got over it. Thank God Anthony's doing great in life. So our right. oldest. And, and uh, so I got out to Vegas. I took him out to Vegas and he's bowling instruments. And here's this guy, Alex Aguirre. And I'm watching this guy bowling. I'm going, this guy is sick. This guy ought to be on tour. Is that good? And so I'm, I just happened to be fumbling through one night on YouTube. And here I find you and Alex Aguiar. And I'm watching this flipping match. And I got the, I, I tell you what, I got the biggest thrill out of watching that match because it brought back memories when you used to bowl against people and you could size them up. And that one guy you were bowling with, the one guy was throwing it straight. His partner was pretty good. His partner yeah. was pretty good. The other guy I threw straight, you knew his ass was just going to spit out a diamond he was just a matter of time you had to wait him out and he was going to he was going to gag no disrespect to the man i'm sure he's a nice person he's a good bowler but oh, i yeah. could see it coming i could see it coming and Absolutely. i just and i and i watched you and i watched ag and i go this is going to be this is going to be epic and how and just the way it ended was incredible i mean one of the greatest matches and you know honestly it's on live streaming they had on abc sport they'd have a million five people watching that because it was so exciting you know, that, was, that was one of the most memorable weeks for me that I've had in bowling because at that time, uh, by the way, I love uh, Bean's uh, comment that he's a big Yankees fan. I hope Alex actually sees that. Oh, I, I think he uh, – look, when you <laughs> see a guy like the last thing Alex, Alex is, is a big Yankees fan. But I rem that, during that time, I was working uh, capital sales for Brunswick. So in my okay. territory was the Northeast. And that particular week, I had to visit shops in the Massachusetts area. And that bowling, that event took place in uh, East Providence, Rhode Island. Yep. And, uh, we had tried to qualify the first squad, and they were terrible on the left that week, believe it or not. Yep. I remember, and that was uh, when I had just started going full-time to uh, to no thumb. So I wasn't using my thumb on that show. I don't you know. Didn't you, use, you didn't use your thumb? No, I couldn't tell. It looked like you were cocking on cocking your wrist. I God damn, no, you threw a good one. Most like of the lefties that, and the good lefties, I'm talking about like the, the Mike Licksteins, like the yeah. guys that are super duper Hall of Famers all across the US, but let alone the, the, the Northeast. Um, and then I had finally just said, I'm going to jump in. I had a two reckless and a Pearl Karma, a DV8 and a Brunswick ball. And I jumped into about the fourth arrow and I figured out a way to average like 225 the next day. Alex is going to average 240 or whatever oh, it was. Yeah. And then if anybody goes and watches that Neva doubles event, it wound up being a tie. Alex threw all three in the 10th frame yeah. for us to tie team total. So we had to go into a roll off. Yeah. And he's uh, watching. They got to watch this match. I'm telling you, it was epic. I was like, I could not, I was like enamored. So I picked with up my first win with, uh, you know, when I, when I was married, Alex was one of my groomsmen. So I picked up my first ever Neva title with one of my best friends for throughout my entire Very life. Yes. Yeah, so nice. His house while I was, making my paycheck working for Brunswick. So that was you know, that's the great thing about bowling. You know, you can have friends like that and, and they become, you know, your best man in your wedding. And, and I had the same thing with me in my life. My buddy, Nick Sapiti was my best man in our wedding with Leslie and I, and, you know, it's, it's funny when you have those moments and you get to share those, you live with, they live with you forever. You know, I tell you what, was your dad there that day? No. Was he there? God dang it. So many guys saying, you know, that, you know, the word, it's the word. If there's only one word, Nobody. I kept hearing the back because <laughs> no, nobody obviously comes from from dad. Uh, but you oh, kept hearing yeah. or a little nobody. short or a little short. Yes, or a little short. Um, nobody was um, another one of my good friends, Matt Freiberg, who's also was the guy that ran out when Ryan Simonelli, another fantastic, sensational yeah. future yeah. Hall of Fame lefty, won his first title. Um, but Matt and I had always stuck with the. Uh, the nobody attitude. I actually had a couple of shirts that had nobody written on, on nice. the old collar. Yeah. Um, but uh, that was all, that was always just like the reminder to, to reset the brain. And, and if you don't mind, John, I would actually like to take that thought into another question I have for you getting off of 
like the history of you and, and this, but going more into the physical nature of your game, because this is a question I've always had for you. So my, my, my closest friend is, her name is Stephanie. And uh, Stephanie always is the person that understands my stutter step. In other words, I take two steps back before I go forward in order, because similar to Barry Asher, when he, yeah. he gets started yeah. through the hand and the ball and went forward. Yep. For yep. me, I've got a stutter step, two, three steps back, similar to like old school Norm Duke, where he used to hang off the back of the approach yeah. just to build up some momentum, especially since I don't have my thumb in the ball. There was a period in your career where I distinctly remember you not only getting set prior to stepping up onto the approach, yeah. but actually putting your hand in the ball, yes. getting set. Then walking up. I remember walking. that too. Well, you know what happened there? Great great point. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of that. So what happened is early on when I was making TV – um, there was no hitch in my giddy up somewhere along the way. Maybe it was because I went through a period where I, uh, I wasn't winning. I started to get a little apprehensive. I think it was just, so I said, frick this, I got to do something. So I got to put, let me preset. So I'm not fidgeting, you know, with the ball. And so it worked and it was a gimmick. So I'd, I'd basically take my, my feet and I would, you know, I'd have my weird little gimmick there when I would just like, scrape my shoes off the wood approach or the synthetic approach. I'd get up there with my preset position. I would set and I would go, I wouldn't have a chance to, wouldn't have a chance to lock up. And it worked for a while. It got me through the rest of my career. It's just I, I had remember your, your eyes were so dead focused too. Like you yeah. had like lasers coming out of your eyes. I remember watching this going yeah. like, man, yeah. this guy is like total yeah. focus. Like a bomb yeah. could go off behind him and he's not going to budge. It was the most, yeah. it was really yeah. wild to see because you could feel it. It was so palpable through the, even the TV at the time. Yeah, there was, yeah, we, you know, that was part of the sports psychologist I work with, you know, um, Dr. Bray. I spent some time with him in the late eighties and um, it was all about, there were so many steps to it, but it was all about focus in the end. It was I mean, yeah. it was, it, you, you bled it. It was, it was really wild to see. And that's, that's one of the things, and I, I'm just, I'm a casual, but that's how yeah. much it stood out, yeah. uh, you know, and then the, during your highlight package, just how freaking real the emotion was. And, and I know it's always real, well, but like, you know, let's when, when it bleeds me, through, when you can feel it, yeah. it's, it's the best theater yeah. ever. Well, let's used to say to me, I was like a bottle of pop. You shake me all week long. And when we got to the show, Boom. no shit was, there's no telling what was going to happen. And she had to cover her eyes sometimes because she didn't know, you know I mean? This is like, oh shit, what's going to do? I wish they would have just let her talk. I wish they would just let her talk because she's so poised. And I just said, and I was just like, forget, I'm, I'm out, you know? And, and, and Denny would say, come on, we're going to reel it in now, John. And I'm like, I'm off the reservation, bro. I just won. I got nothing left. My brain's going hundred miles an hour. My wife's just sitting there smiling. She's all calm. And I just, I, I couldn't be that way. You look like them lottery balls before they pick them, you exactly. know, when they're all bouncing exactly. around and everything. Yeah. Exactly. You know, just, I don't know. I mean, I think a couple of times I might have had a mild heart attack at certain times during during the last shot here or there. But, you know, it was back then, you know, things change in your life. So many, so many things that happen. You know, I remember some of the conversations your dad had. I keep going back to your dad, John, because I have so much love and respect for him. And um, all the times, he talked to me and we spent time together. I got to tell you a few things. I really do because I've been thinking about this a lot. Um, as we get older, as we get older, we start to recognize some things that are very important. You know, um, your dad and I went to dinner in Cleveland, 1990. Just so happened that that week was the first week I ever made television. Okay. But your dad and I had many times together we would talk and, and he would spend time with me and mentor me. And we're sitting down having dinner. And when you have two Italians having pasta and a glass of wine, we're going to start talking and we're going to get real. And he starts talking to me and he looks at me, he says, Mass, he's Johnny, he says, you're going to get married one day. I don't know where he brought this out of. He says, here's the way it's going to go down. He says, you're going to die for your kids and you're going to kill for your wife. And that stuck with me. That stuck with me. And I always looked up to that because that is the epitome of what I think this life is all about is family, your friends, you got your close ones, your mother and father. I hear you talking about your you're making things in the kitchen for your mother. Pat, God bless her. That's what it's all about, man. This is, you know, it's that's what it's all about. It's what it's, it's become for me is my family. Um, and and you know, we had the guys on the tour. We had a close knit group of guys, you know, and and some of the older guys, you know, in your case with your father being a veteran. You know, he would spend time and, and he spent time with a lot of guys. I mean, 
and I, I, I don't want to take away from, I know you guys want to talk to me about a lot of things, but the, the things that he did for so many people, so many people on the tour, getting that staff together, taking M. Leto and Parker and Randy and, and the guys and putting a staff together and, and putting things on the map. It really did a lot for the game of bowling. It helped the tour to have that. The things that he did elevated everything, you know, and he was behind a lot of it, you know, and um, so for that and for many other things. And, you know, I mean, <laughs> he was a great inspiration to me. Your father was truly a great inspiration. I was in Detroit and, and, and just so happened it's where your father won the Triple Crown in, in in Sterling Heights, and uh, and I'm I'm not even I just turned 16, and I'm in the I'm looking through the the curtain in the paddock, and here he comes out, my idol, Johnny Petraglia. He's got the mint green shirt on. He looks at me, says, "How you doing?" I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> "Oh my God." And, you know, and, and, and he wins that week, you know. And so now fast forward a couple of years. I'm a young pup. I'm on the tour. It's 1983. I'm down in Toledo. All right. We're bowling a national championship. It's probably maybe the fifth or sixth tournament I ever bowled on tour. And I, I didn't bowl very well, but I had a really big last block. I went from Nowhereville to, okay, I can bowl a little bit. I Close to maybe 300 over for the block. And I'm sitting up there watching, you know, and always still like an amazement. I'm out here on tour with all these great bowlers. You know, I'm still, you know, gaga over everything. Right. And so I, I, I'm, I'm just, you know, the wood stands and I'm sitting over there just watching bowling. Here comes your dad up next to me. He said, Hey, mass. <laughs> oh my God. He's talking to me. And he says, nice bowling today. I said, thanks. And he says, uh, where'd you play? And I was like, yeah, we did this, I did that, you know. I just, I was like, this is my idol. You know, this is one of the guys I looked up, you know. So yes. anyway, go we go we go a year further. And now uh, my father-in-law at the time, uh, Pete, he says, hey, there's this tournament called the Newsday in New York. And uh, it was a great tournament. And um, if you guys ever looked into the history of that term, it was a phenomenal tournament. It's like, if you won this tournament, you were the man. On the East Coast. As a matter of fact, in the most recent Bowler's Journal, they have a uh, two-page piece on the Newsday and the history of it. Continue. So I bowled, I bowled there in 84, Wontaw Lanes, and uh, I led the qualifying. I was sitting on cloud nine. We got into match play, and uh, so now we had to bowl everybody like a three-game match, okay? And your dad opened a can on me, okay? I mean, opened a can on me. He, he taught me. I mean, he's like, I'm going to teach you a lesson right here. And he did it. And he just completely massaged me for three games. I mean, just owned it. And he just, no, no run him out. No stuck him in my face. Just, okay. No big deal. And I was like, that, that's a professional. That's a professional. I mean, he taught, that's what he, that's what he emulated, you know? And so God bless him. He, he comes up to me, he says, Mass, come here. Do you want to meet Andy Verapapa? I go, oh my God, Andy Verapapa's here. Oh my God, I can't believe this. this is, he sat me down next to Andy Verry Papa. And this was just not long after he passed away. So I got a chance that night. And I was like, this guy, I can't believe it. You know what I mean? That's that's just, I'm sorry. I'm going to get into it, but that's just the way it is, man. I love your dad so much for so many reasons, but Andy Verry Papa, you know? Do you think we picked the uh, most thankful person, you know, for the Thanksgiving edition, Rob? Yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> no, I was, what I was going to say while you were going there is, what you said about looking up to dad is it's almost like the trickle effect too, because when you talk to my dad, one of my dad's idols, if not his idol is Dick Weber. Yeah. And the one thing that yeah. he always talks about Dick Weber is that Dick treated every single person he met, like they were the CEO of a fortune 500 company. And he also remembered everybody's name all the time. Yeah. So dad always tried to model himself yeah. off of Dick yeah. Weber. And it seems like, you you follow the same path. Parker followed the same path as you, and yeah. it's, it's a really a good trickle. Great effect. idols. Oh. Parker has some great great people around him on the East Coast. And when you talked about my game a little bit, you know the thing is I had to come to grips with is that when you look at a guy like Dave Davis, Earl Anthony, Parker, even your dad for that matter, there was um, some of the classic fundamentals. There was a good knee bend. There was a great follow through. 
the, the foot was pointed straight down, parallel down the lane, all the textbook things, you know, that you, if you're teaching a young person how to bowl, you, say, okay, you want to do this, you know? And um, so, you know, what I found out was I couldn't do that. Um, the way I was, the way I was made, and my dad told me later on in my life that I guess when I was born, my feet were kind of pointing this way and he had to put me in braces for a while. So I think I still always had a little bit of that going on. And um, so I never could, I never could what they call toe out. Toe out would mean, you know, as a left-hander, your right foot would point out to the right. And that was like a big thing back then because you would, that be how you square up to the lane, you know, and have some knee bend. It was easier to bend your knee if you're towed out versus if you're towed in. I couldn't right. do it. So what I had to come to grips with um, was I had to accept what I am for what I am. And that was what it was going to be, you know, and Fred Borden, God bless him. He, he taught me a lot, you know, uh, about being able to match up, change, change ball reactions by, you know, manipulating things, arm swing, tempo, foot speed, arm speed, uh, hand positions, everything. So by the time we got into the, Eight, late 89, early 90s started happening. Things started happening. You know, um, I started making a lot more top 24s, started making some shows. And then in 91, it really popped. Everything started popping. You know, I remember the first win because um, really, I remember a lot of things, but the first win was it really kind of interesting because uh, I had a 100 pin lead over Mike Edwards with a game to go in the position round. So we're in the 42nd game. I, okay. Most people can't screw it up. I did. So we get to the we get to the point where I'm losing my ball reaction. It's one of the things we all know I've been there where that's hitting it. We don't know what we're gonna do, and you're trying and it's not working. And I'm shooting 170 and he's lined up. He's shooting like 250. So now I need a mark of the tenth. I go up and I'll eat the three five six, like a two four five for a righty. Sure. I get the ball halfway down the lane and Litchie's over to the right. He goes, he missed it, he missed it. And I missed it, right? So now I blow. I blow. I finished. Now I qualify second. So, but fortunately for me that week, I watched Litchie's 20-year anniversary of him winning his first title on tour. He brought out an eight millimeter in the paddock, and I kept watching it over and over and over. And I was just so enamored with that because I'm still a fan. You got to understand, there's just still this little kid in me that's a fan of this whole thing. Drives me crazy. And uh, I saw him go up and have to double in the 10th to beat Dave Davis and he's on the approach. And this, and I was like, and I was crying watching it. Cause I was like, I just, I'd love to be that one time, one time, you know? So we get to the TV show and Nelson Burton comes down and we're practicing Kelly Kaufman, myself and Rick Steelsmith. And he looks at all three of us. He says, now, listen, he goes, you're not going to win today. You're probably not going to win. Okay. And it wasn't arrogant. It was kind of just being honest. He says, you're probably not going to win today. But if you guys are smart, you're going to learn from this. And maybe one day you'll win. And it kind of took all the pressure off me. Yeah. You know? And I went back to remembering when I, when I bowled in Cleveland and had the front five against Pensac and blew it. And I, and I popped my cork too quick. And my thing was like, okay, we got to maintain today. We got a, we got 10 frames. I kept telling myself, it takes 10 frames to win a game. Got to be in this thing, 10 frames. So, you know, things, how things happen, you know? So if Nelson doesn't say that, I don't know. I might've been a little bit more apprehensive, might not have happened, but he took all the pressure off me because I was like, I stopped thinking about winning and I started thinking about throwing the ball good for that, for that point. For someone that's never won and had been bowling 200 tournaments. Okay. Maybe it was time for me to stop worrying about it. And that's when things start happening, you know? Absolutely. John, do you think uh, no? It, it, it's fine. Do you think you talk about hand manipulation and, and doing different things with the ball yeah. and all that? Do you think that's a lost art today? I think with all yeah. the equipment that's out there, I think people switch ball more than they actually switch their release. Well, um, pre resin, you had the ball was important. The surface, as Fred would always tell me, was always the most important thing, and I still think to this day is. Um, the mental game, if you had a good head on your shoulders, there's a good chance you were going to figure it out to win. Um, you can take a guy like Amleto, for example, that had a phenomenal mental outlook. And once he started figuring it out, he was pretty much unstoppable for a period of time. He had a look nobody else had because he knew how to he knew how to play with feel and touch. 
and he had a great metal team. And, and he didn't have to do anything funky with the bone balls. And we had that window, right? And we got through 91 and, okay, I had all the gimmicks. And I thought back then, and all the things that Fred taught me along the way, changing my motion, moving up and back on the approach, my swing tempo, you know, we had shoulder socket swing, which was my weakest because that was kind of like Parker. Parker was an arm swing bowler, so free from the top. And I was more or less an arm or a wrist per person. I could I'd curve it more, you know, and um, so those things, those manipulations allowed me to play day to day. Right. So but when we when the Excalibur comes out, the whole, whole ball game changed. And all of a sudden you got people winning on tour that I remember I'm not going to say any names, but there's a couple of people I saw. I go, what the heck is going on here? Yeah. Holy cow. Because the ball was doing some things. So I took a little break. You know, I freaked out when when Leslie was carrying Anthony because I got into a slump. Right, I'm bowling so great in '91, and yep. uh, everything was everything was just 11 shows, six title matches. Okay, here we go. We got this. We get to two, we get to 1992. Complete opposite. Right. And all of a sudden, now I forgot how to bowl. I don't know what it is. And you know, Johnny's not here right now, but I remember I was in Peoria. Leslie stayed home, and uh, Johnny and I went out to dinner. He's giving me one of these talks, and he goes, "Okay, now listen." Yes, listen, this is it. Here's the, here's the deal. You're going through an adjustment period right now. It's going to take a year. Boss had it. Amleto had it. It's yep. going to be okay. It's going to take a year. You're going to have to get comfortable with what's going on. You're married now. It's a different life. You're going to be fine. Don't worry about it. And that's what he said. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's here. What? Dad, I want to kiss you. That's what happened to your hair. I don't have any hair. You know, come on. <laughs> Oh my god. My god, Johnny. Welcome, JP. Good to see you. Ocho, how are you? How's everybody? everybody? Large and in charge, buddy. Happy Thanksgiving, my friend. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. That's terrific. Johnny, do you remember you told me that? I mean, you told me so many things. Do you remember we were I mean you've had so many dinners with so many people? I, I get it. You know, yeah. I, mean, I get it. There's a Rolodex. But you told me that one thing you says you're gonna you're gonna kill for your wife and you're gonna die for your kids. You told me well, that. that that's that's the difference you would kill for your wife but you would die for your kids yeah very yeah. true yeah and yeah. uh as i get yeah. closer to that i'm starting to wonder <laughs> <laughs> you know what i find you know it's interesting <laughs> you know it's interesting you know when i when leslie and i first got married i was i was macho as long as i could be macho yeah um, Recently, you know, over the last several years now that the twins are here with us, I've relinquished the title. Now I've just succumbed to, okay, what is it? We're, okay. We're yeah. just Leslie's world here. And I'm just, I'm trying to keep the peace and everything's going to be okay. But there was a time when I wasn't having none of that. I was like, this is the way it's going to be. But now I've learned. Oh, that's the Italian in people. Finally. That's what it is. That's what happens. That's Finally what learned. And, then, and then we give it away. Yeah. It's Sicilian oh, power that went away for us. How's your wife doing, John? How's it going? She's, you know what? Thank God, John. She's uh, she's fantastic. We, uh, you know, we had a rough go last year, um, um, but but we got through it. God bless her. You know, for the first time in my life, I thought, you know, I always thought I'm I'm going to be the guy that's going to uh, be put down. But we had a rough one, but she got through it. Thank God. But you know, honestly, right now I'm kind of heartbroken a little way. You know, Carol, my mother-in-law. You know, she's, she's suffering right now. So she needs our prayers. And my father-in-law's Pete, you know, he's, yeah, sure. his yeah. heart's breaking right now. So, and if they're hearing me right now, I love you both. I love you, Carol. With all right. Right. It's good. You it's know, a, a time of life, John, it happens, you know. Yeah. It's just, uh, you know, it's coming every day. We know it's coming closer that, that hourglass sand is, is dripping out. Every other, another grain's gone. And oh, okay. I got a, you know, I got a couple of months. I'll be seventy-seven. You know, so bless you. So, God bless you. God yeah, bless you. It's just Johnny. It's just hard to understand. You know, I mean, it's like you. I know it's like this. You were sixteen, yeah. maybe, or you were eighteen. It's like where did it all go? We just where did it all go? Yeah, we were just yesterday. I mean, I remember like yesterday, Johnny. We were driving from New Orleans down to Fort Lauderdale, and yeah. you weren't going too good. And I was just starting to get my shit together. And I'm, yeah. I'm just positivity at this point. I've got it all figured out. And I'm, I am for 18 flipping hours. I am telling you, Johnny, you got to think positive. You got to think positive. 
you got to think. And we were yelling and screaming at each other in the freaking van, in your van while we're doing this. I remember, I remember this. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I said, you've got to get over it. Right. And, and we got down there and you come up to me and I'm in the way in line. I made a check. I didn't make top 20 for going mass. You got the smile on your face. This is mass. I did what you said. And I'm going, yes. And he's, <laughs> and, and I three, seven and a 10th to miss a check. And I go, oh. <laughs> You know, we all go through Stick this. With the old method. <laughs> we all go through this where nothing works. It just doesn't matter. But you know, it was interesting. We go back a few weeks later, John, you're in Connecticut, and I'm sure you remember this. We're talking, and I remember the part you won't remember, but you said, Maz, you got to have left to have right. And you got to have right to have left. And it made a lot of sense to me. I was like, he's yeah. right. It's, it's not about the lane, it's about how we shape the ball reaction to make the lane work. Right. Uh, you made TV yeah. that week. You led for a while. You end up making TV. You got out of your slump and the rest is history. But, yeah. you know, I know it's weird because when I talk to my buddy Nick Sapiti, he says, when you bowl bad, it feels like it'll go forever. And when you bowl good, you think you're going to bowl good forever. It's just it's what that's, it is. That's so true. It's so uh, let me see how good your memory is. Do you remember us sitting in the bar after I taught you the British language, uh, the, the Brooklyn language on, the, you know, don't show me much, you know. Well, no, I, re I remember. I remember. I remember when we talked about all the matches and all the events that you had on the East Coast, and when the guy would strike out in the tenth, they'd say right. nobody, nobody, and when they didn't, it'd be a little short, a little short. And we were sitting in the bar, and I, I forget who was up, but then we were watching. Yes, movie. I know. Hey. Stop! Don't say it. I'm going to say it because I know hey. who it was. Because you told me, God rest his soul. God rest him. We all loved him. Okay. Roll the pearl is right. bowling Daryl Curtis for the title. And you go, Maz, this is what Earl does every time. He's going to pinch it. Just watch what happens. Watch here. I go, no, he's not. No, he's not. I go, Maz, just watch. Right. He pinches it. He loses. And you go, a little short. A little short. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> And I, just, I looked at you like, how the flip did you know he's going to do what he just did? He goes, that's what he does. I know his moves. And that's when, we were, but that's, but when you're around with somebody for 25 or 30 years, you know everything about him. You know all the You know, about him. You know always, how, how what? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I always knew if you bowl Don Johnson, you better have the lead going into the ninth frame because he's going to throw the last four. That guy <laughs> was sick. Automatic. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was sick. And I got a chance, you know, I was just talking to your son. I had so thankful now because of the YouTube. I can watch some of these things that I didn't get a chance to see because I started bowling – in 1974, so that's when I started watching you and and all the great bowlers on on tour. But pre 74, I didn't see Jack Squat, so I missed all that. You know, and there's so much great content back there that's being brought out. You know, I mean, even when you bowled in the World Open, I know you told me the story about that whole year, how you won three in a row, you won the tournament champions, and then they started you started fiddling with it, the lanes. I believe yeah. it was when you told me they started fiddling with the lanes. Uh, in the yeah. summer, right? And and Don and Don started coming, and now you had the epic showdown with him in Chicago at the World Open. Whoever's going to win the match is going to yeah. probably win the bowler of the year, yeah. right? You know, yeah. I got to tell you one more thing. You know, I, I can keep talking forever. I'm so glad to see you tonight. God bless you, Johnny. I, I still, you know, I'm thankful and grateful that I had an opportunity to get to know you personally. Um, I remember when we were in Chicago in 1991. And you go, Mass, what are you doing? They go, uh, what? You go, come on, we're going to go to dinner. I said, okay. So you take me to this place, and here's Joe Antonora. And you and I are sitting down. I think Eddie Lies was there. And I'm going, what the flip is going on? And you go, nothing. We're just going to have dinner. Just a little get together with some bowling writers. And now up here they make an announcement for Mid-America Bowling Writers Bore of the Year. And when they, they, they call me out, I look at you and I'm going, freaking, what are you doing here? What are we doing? You know, I'm like, you, you know, I mean, so, you know, I, uh, and I bawled out crying here. I lost my cuckoo there, you know, talking. You cried? No, you didn't. No, you weren't crying. I was going to ask the two guys to jump in if they had anything that. Uh, sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry, guys. No, That's you're so fine. It, it's not. 
Give it to me, I, sit, I do this. That's all I do. That, that's that's my do. job. And I that's yell, oh, my God. JP will tell you about it, but uh, on another oh, time. Oh, it's all he yells is, oh, well, that's, that's, that's you know, nice. I, I say some other <laughs> choice words when it's appropriate, but that's about it. My, I remember my when, uh, repertoire is limited. <laughs> I remember when we were, in, uh, we were in Vegas in 1985, my first year on tour, Johnny. I'm watching you play blackjack. Oh, I can't take this. Let's get the flip out of here. You looked at me and said, let's go. You want to come to my room? I go, sure. All right, I'll come to your room, hang out. And you uh, taught me the lunch punch. <laughs> oh, right. Taught me how to lunch punch. I, 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 feel, I feel like a new man that came out of there. It's like, let's go. What do we got? Who's going to mess with me? I didn't know how to fight. Now I'm a bowler, right? And I'm, I'm, he's going, okay, man. So I got to breathe out. And I, and, and I watched the video of you. I think you had a double in the tent to beat Bill Coleman in, in, in uh Oh, yeah. And Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Yeah. And I'm watching this. Thank God again for YouTube. And I'm watching this, and you got it. You're in an epic match. You're rapping on the left lane, and you're. I can just see you're. You're, you're ready to go. You're steaming. Yeah. I, I know you, right? And you go up and double intent. You go, oh, these look. You know, you yeah. just kill somebody. You know what I mean, right? And you lunch punch it. And I said, that's the guy. That's that that's it. Guy. Yeah, that was. Uh, they at least teach you to punch with your right hand, so you don't hurt your bowling hand, your left hand. I mean, because that'd be that's that's formidable at this point. You know, you don't want. Way, imagine you lose six months of tour from. You know, uh, you cracking be, a guy in the nose. <laughs> you got to be careful about that. That's, uh, yeah. and, and John found the video where uh, I'm doing a uh, thing with uh, Burton, where I'm right. uh, talking about timing, and I break a board, and I can't even believe I used my left hand in that thing. You know, just that was really stupid. If the board didn't, <laughs> <hit me. laughs> oh my god, uh, some of those things, man. Some of those, you know. The one thing I'll tell you about, John, you know where you became really famous? Is that when you would change pairs, when we would go from one pair to the next oh, pair, yeah. I'd everybody in. would say, Master isn't moving to the next pair. He's moving in like it's a house. <laughs> he had like six towels on, on one hand, the ball on the other, the oh, okay, and, well, and everything had its space. Right. Well, well, let me, I was trying to be, I, I appreciate that, but there's there's a reason for this because I had this little flipping rosin bag and I'd beat the shit out of it and it would go everywhere, right? It would go everywhere, yeah. Right. So what I did is I, and everybody was like, Maz, you, I'm so sick of your shit all over the place. So I, <laughs> I devised a way. I put a towel and put my rosin bag on top of the towel. Then I took a bowling ball sleeve that the bowling balls were in, clear bag. So I'd yeah. wrap that so I could. And, and go about my business. And but you're right, I did move into a pair. I would literally move into a pair. You know, it's, I'm surprised you didn't change pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I keep telling my kids, hit the rosin, hit the rosin. I don't want to hit the rosin. Hit the rosin. You got to have the grip, kid. Hit the rosin. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, and that wasn't cigar smoke I was seeing on TV. That was actually rosin powder that I'm seeing. Oh, absolutely. Okay, oh, yeah. gotcha. Oh, yeah. I thought some going everywhere. had a stogie in the front row or something. Oh, yeah. It was going everywhere. We had it going everywhere. It was, yeah, it was yeah, great times. Wonderful times. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, make sure that you tell the whole family I said uh, happy yeah. Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, we said hello. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. How's yeah. your daughter doing? How's she? She's. She's wonderful, you know. Well, well, they're coming tomorrow, you know, and uh, and she's doing great. Uh, what are you What are you making? What's Pat making for dinner? More important, uh, we have tomorrow. The one thing we don't have is turkey. Okay. Most none of us really like turkey. Yeah. So we have lasagna and we have a honey baked ham and a bunch of other stuff. It's gonna be yeah. That's a winner in my book. Yeah. Time to time to gain ten pounds. You know. Yeah, we're, well, this is the time year. This is the time year. It all goes to shit, and we get it yeah. back. So yeah. This back is, and, we call it bulking season. That's what it's called. That's how you keep your frame of mind going. It's yeah. bulking season. Yeah, like we'll let it down. We're running, season. we're eating. Yeah, I got it. You know what we did? I gotta, I gotta tell you something real quick. I, we're talking about food because we always have to. We can't help it. It's Italian tradition. We got to talk about food. So Joseph, our second oldest, as you know, Johnny, he, yeah. he gets into this deal. He's, he's, he's completely embraced the Italian heritage that I didn't grab on like he does he's just he's he is amazing so he says to me dad he says we're gonna do we're gonna do sauce i said what are you talking about because we're gonna can our own sauce i said uh, really? oh yeah oh yeah so oh yeah so so he says we do this two years in a row okay and we do like 300 jars i got a thousand pounds of tomatoes in the back of my flipping truck okay oh. Oh, and we got like freaking eight tubs and we got it going on and it comes out a little charred, John. A little 
Okay. So my wife, she says, I ain't going to tell him this, but we ain't doing this again. We're not doing this again. I'm not doing this again. And I'm like, I know, babe, I got it. I got it. So he goes to Italy, thank God, in August. For, he sees my family and Leslie's family. And he's, he's there and he comes back. He says, Dad, we're doing it. I go, no, Joe, it's too late. Come on. Let's not worry. He's dead. I know what you're thinking. I got it all figured out. We're going to put a little water in the bottom of the pots and we're not going to burn the sauce. I know you're not going to be, I know you don't want to offend me. I know it's a little burnt. I know you're not going to do that because I got it all figured out. I said, Joe, he goes, dad, I got it figured out. I said, okay. So we need 750 pounds. And I'm going to tell you something. This is absolute pure oro, oro, gold for 10. It is the best flipping sauce I have ever had in my life. And if I don't send you four jars, Forgive me. I'm going to send you four jars and I want Pat to fire it up and do what she's got to do with the, you know, with the onions and the garlic. And I'm telling you, you are going to just absolutely flip over this. It's, it's outstanding. I'm sorry. I are you going to be able to replicate it though? Because I mean, you had a jar at first. That's the thing. Oh. Now you, it was almost by accident now. <laughs> take it, take it to a lab and I'm see. I'm looking how they forward can... to it, John. I'm yeah, looking. I'm going to do it. But uh, uh, JP, before you go, uh, sure. your son wanted me to uh, pull up a video of uh, of your past real quick. Yeah. Here, so let me let me throw it up here. Hang on. I see. can't help it, Johnny. I love you. I just I it's, you it's great to catch up with you. It's I just great. Watch this one too. So you're, the best, yeah. Junior. you're okay. the best. I love you, Junior. You're the best for this. Thank you for doing this tonight. What are we? What are we? What are we watching here? Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. You, you really got to thank Rob. It. He's, he's it. all this you're together. Come on. Let's see. I'm, I'm when when Rob gets the uh, technical things on. going, then we'll we'll watch. Until yeah, then, we're gonna we're gonna release that so we can. I Mike think White, I can vow for the sauce. My buddy Mike White says I can vow for the sauce. I gave him a couple, gave him a starter set. That's it. Real, real quick, while Rob's doing this, just a, another throwback for everybody in the chat. Spanning is rising and chewing is gone. It's my sister-in-law Nicole. I love you, Nicole. Thank you. Yeah. I went into the front room and got a VHS copy of uh, It's a Wonderful mother. Life sitting on the couch. Mother. Well, yeah, well, you got to get in there. Come here, say hi to Johnny. Come here. I want you to meet Johnny. Come here. Thanksgiving uh, tradition. Here. Come here. Come here. And I, I would still wear pleats if I had them. I think pleats should still hey. be in style. That's just me. Here Johnny, this is, yeah. this is Marco Giovanni. This is my little guy. He's yeah, a little guy. Hey, Chandra, Marco Giovanni. Hey, 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 how are you? Giovanni. Listen, <laughs> this guy is 92 pounds. The ball's over his head. His mother says, I, what are we going to do with him? What are we going to do with him? I can't do this. Come here, Eva. Come home and say hi. Come here. Come here. We got everybody. The Eva, this, is, this, is my, this is my man, John. This is Johnny Jr. and Johnny. She's Eva Maria right here. Hi. See? Hi, yeah, how are you? <laughs> These two nice are studs. Studs. Great stuff. All, All right. right. All right, guys. I got the video. Okay, let's, let's do it. got the video. Oh, my God. Let me guess. Okay. This year on the fall tour, we have something we feel is very special. Each week, we'll have a PBA guest star who will give you his perspective on a way he feels he can really help your game. And today, we're very fortunate to have Hall of Famer Johnny Petraglia. Thank you, Earl. When the great Andy Verapapa was teaching me how to bowl, he taught me the four physical laws at the explosion point in sports, which I'm going to show you right now. Law number one, the body gets there before the hands do. Law number two, the upper torso is in the center of gravity. Law number three, when the hand gets to the center of gravity, the wrist releases. And law number four, you follow through toward the target. Now, Earl, as a professional baseball pitcher, you realize that it was the same thing. One, two, three, four. In tennis, they step in, one, center of torso, three, and then they follow through. Now, the most graphic demonstration is in martial arts. Now, if we watch law number one, the body's there. Law number two, the center of torso is there. Law number three, the wrist releases at the center of gravity. And law number four, follow through toward the torso. Very graphic, John, very graphic. And no one demonstrates the proper way to do these fundamentals than the great Marshall Holman, who you'll see later today in the championship match. There you go. If you think Earl was show was go. If I was Earl, I'd have been shit in my pants because that fist was going right to his shit. That's shoulder. what I was thinking too. And what if what if Earl recoiled or something like that? Like, uh, hey, hey. Yeah. I was really into it at that time. I was. Uh, I mean, that's, a, that's a heck of a pre tape right there. Dude, you almost look like John Travolta. You got the moves. You're like, okay, we're going to turn the body here. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do this. And I just wasn't going to do staying alive, you know? <laughs> 
Wonderful. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Oh yeah. Well, we had so much fun. I mean, those were the, you know, those were the good times and everybody was still getting along. You know, it's the greatest thing about bowling is that, you know, I don't know how the hell these people, you know, this guy, you know, they like this guy and they like that guy. And nobody gets along with each other nowadays. We didn't have that freaking problem. Everybody got along. We're in a freaking paddock. We had all kinds of people from everywhere and there was no problem. Everybody. How does that, how's that, we, we get out of the paddock and all of a sudden we're in this world and these people are all goofballs nowadays. What the shit's going on here? Crazy. You know? Times are different. That's all. Put them in the bowling yeah. alley. Piece of the pie the is smaller, it feels like. Yeah, used to, I mean, Johnny Jr. says, you know, basically everything he has that he looks forward to or has in life is because of bowling. Uh, you know right. what I mean? It's 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 every facet that he, every connection yeah. is 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 a, is a bowl. Is it's like six degrees of Kevin Bacon. There's a bowling connection to every single thing. His job, his his friends. You know what I mean? And it's and it's so true when uh, the camaraderie that rolls in with it. Some of the well, greatest. Think, uh, go ahead, everything I'm doing now with the uh, the veterans, uh, the bowlers, yeah. you know, the BVL and all that. It all goes back to when it got started in 1970. And uh, yeah. and then yeah. it's still going. It just then all, all happened through bowling. Yeah, and, uh, I remember and Johnny when you told me about old, uh, we're growing up. Uh, now he has five centers, and uh, he's the president of the BVL, and uh, things are awesome. really going well. And then we uh, met this crazy rich guy, and in, in in the DC area, who just uh, is doing everything for us. Wonderful man. Who, uh, That's awesome. That's awesome. Bowling. Just uh, and he just keeps spending money on gaming and, and the vets and everything. It's been you know what you know the uh, I remember when you told me about a lot of things going on when you went over there and the Tet yeah. Offensive and you even told me the story about the uh, the rubber trees <laughs> and and we're not allowed to shoot the rubber trees because I was at Firestone back then or somebody owned the trees. It's okay if you guys blow each other up, but don't blow the freaking trees up. Trees <laughs> out, yeah. Okay. A frick. Okay. Well, you got a great memory. <laughs> no, I, mean, I mean, the Ted offensive. Yeah, you're talking to me about things. I'm like, right. What? You know, I mean, you talk about my eyes lighting up when I was bowling. I was listening. It's like, holy shit. I mean, you're so vivid the way you explained it to me, you know. And mm -hmm. I remember when I remember when they did it. We did a piece on you and you were talking about um, Born on the Fourth of July. And you talked about how you thought it was important for everybody to go see that movie so they could understand what the hell's going on here, you know. Yeah. And uh, they don't know, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, it's gotten a lot better with the VA since then. Thank that's God. Great. You know, that's yeah. great. You know, and, and I think that I, I see I see veterans today. My father was a veteran. My my uncle was a veteran. My my father in law was a veteran. Peter. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, you know, look, spill blood for this country, spill blood yeah. for each other, for people we didn't even like. We spilled you, you spill blood for them. Yeah, it's uh, that's, just, that's what's made us a great country. We can't lose sight of that. I hope somewhere along the way we got to figure it out. I hope we figure this out. I think we have got it figured out, but we got these other people in Washington. They got to start figuring this shit out quick because I don't like what I'm seeing. I'm not happy. I'm not, I got nothing against anybody. I just figure it out, boys. Get it together. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys go and finish your show. And uh, thanks, John. Uh, happy Thanksgiving tomorrow. Have a great day. I'm already uh, having this has already been this time this okay. next month. Mind blowing for me. Thank you for saying hello again, Johnny. I miss yeah. you. Love you. Leslie, kiss. Love all of you. You know. Take care. Thanks, JP. Happy Thanksgiving, buddy. Johnny, happy holidays. I'm sure I'll see you around there, buddy. I'll see you soon. You got it, man. Take care. All right. Yeah. Okay. The one and only Johnny Petragli Sr. Yeah. Yeah, you what know what? We you know what? Five here. Wow. You know, I, again, Sorry. and I appreciate being on the show with you, gentlemen. But honest to God, I mean, there's just you know, um, people like John were so important to um, to me and to so many other people. I mean, like I like I said again, you know, um, he he took that professionalism he learned from Dick, and then he passed it on to others. You know, and um, so I, I, you know, that's what made this, that's how we got to this little point. And we kept going for a while there. You know, I got a chance to, um, again, saw it on, just happened to catch it like two weeks ago, the speech he gave to the Brunswick staff a few years back. And he talked about the history of Brunswick. And I was like enamored. I could not believe it, what was going on, you know. And um, 
And I started crying hearing the things he was talking about because, you know, I know, you know, uh, him very well and uh, having everything he's been through and talking about signing his contract and, and those things were big. And, you know, there's only one guy that's done that. Well, Dick, Dick lasted. It was Dick Weber and then your dad. And, you know, now, well, Parker's there. Parker's, Parker's, yeah, yeah. Parker's going to do the same, you know, but it's uncommon. I mean, I flip all contracts like I changed underwear, guys. I wasn't, that was just it. You know, I mean, and no disrespect, I love all those ball manufacturers. I mean, I won with Ebonite. Um, I love John Jowdy and Columbia 300. John was very instrumental. In fact, when I won in Reno, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, I was in, <laughs> I go to, I went to Muskegon, okay? And I talked to Jack Morandini and Jack was high up at Brunswick. And, um, and I had two things I wanted to do. Number one, I had a, I had a box manufacturer in Detroit and I'm, you know, always thinking, right. So I was thinking if I get the Brunswick contract to sell them the boxes from the box company I have here in Detroit, I can make a little bit of money. Right. And I said, so I sit down with Jack and I'm telling him, I think I can make these boxes and we can save some money. Just tell me what it is per box. Right. And we got to talking and I think was it, who's the guy's name was Brian with the glasses in the nineties. That was, Head of Brunswick. Uh, Collins. Bingo. So I stopped in his office, say hello. And I said, Brian, I'd really like to, I'd really like to bowl for Brunswick, you know? And he goes, did you talk to Johnny about it? I go, well, yeah, kind of. He says, John, you got to talk to Johnny about that. I don't handle that, you know? And I, he goes, but you know, we have Mike Alby and we've got Parker, you know, we're, we're pretty much all set. So now what happens is I bowled the whole winter with Brunswick exclusively. Okay. I mean, exclusively from first week, through the rest. Now I wasn't on their staff, but I was with Brunswick throwing Brunswick. Art McKee was there. Ray Edwards was drilling balls for me. Sure. And um, I led Erie by a bazillion. Okay. And I found a way not to make TV. I out averaged the field by 10 pins a game in Erie in 1994. And I flip and blew it. I go open, open in the ninth and 10th. I go from second to sixth and we're driving home. Anthony's a pup. He's not even a year. And uh, unless he's, you know, in the front, Miss me and I'm just like, I can't believe this. I can't flip it. believe this. And back then the quantum was out and the quantum was paying a fortune to make TV and another fortune if you won with it. Now, back then, if you won, it was big, but the ball incentives were just as big we're out of this world. Insane. Yep. So, so. I'm like, I'm losing my mind over this. So no, I, That's something the I mean, casual fan doesn't know either, by the way. Oh, so, and I mean, this is, this is, this is insider info. So this is great stuff. I mean, just to. I didn't know that at all. So, yeah. so here's what's happened. I got to tell you. So let's go into it. Here's how it goes. Here's how life happens. And this, this is just the life. I don't know if I don't, maybe I'm not the only person, but I know sometimes I got myself in pickles. You know, I get, I get myself in a, in a jam. I'm bowling Dave Traber. And I'll swear on my grave, I did not re-rack a third time. I look at the score sheet because they had the overhead still, right, and the projectors. And I look yeah. up, and I, I, I'm like in the ninth frame, and I'm going to the tenth, and I can see real quick I only have one check mark for a re-rack. And I look at the rack, and I don't like it. And we got a close match. And I re-rack the second ball in the tenth. He jumps out of his seat. He re-racked. He's got three. He's got zero. I go, what are you freaking talking about? And I look up at the freaking thing and I go, what the shit is that? So I'm freaking out. I'm going, holy shit. So I get zero for the ball. Lose the match. Oh. Now, we got, now we, got two, we got two games to go. Holman comes down, Marshall, God bless him. He says, file it. File it. And let it go, right? And he goes, come on. File it. So I end up shooting 260-something. I'm right back in a second. Dennis Horan's in the lead with a game to go, right? So Dennis and I are bowling for first and second. He's looking good. He's got like 230 working into the 10th. And I can shoot 220 if I strike out in the ninth and 10th and force him to mark to lead. 7-10 in the ninth. Okay. I make the classic mistake that your father would tell you never do. Look up and see what's going on around you. I oh, yeah. You're right. I go, shit, I need a mark. Three seven, miss. Done. I'm gonna tell you something. I thought I died right there. I thought I died because I had it all in front of me. I said, okay, because I'm using Brunswick. I'm definitely throwing the quantum. I'm gonna get Mike Cheddar. 
I'm going to get paid and I'm probably going to win this thing. And we're going to walk around with 60,000. It's here we go. It's my week. And it went from that to sixth place. And I'm in the van on the way home. And I am, where's my wife? I am so pissed. I am punching the roof of the van for a freaking half hour. I might have put a hole in the damn roof. I look to my right. She's out cold. She's sleeping. She's just had enough. She's numb. After after 20 minutes of this, she's <laughs> I'm not kidding. And I was like, hey, you freaking, how do I freaking miss the freaking show? I just had it. You know what I mean? So, and, and, and your dad's been there. It happens. And you, it's like, God dang it. How did I just do this? I had it all down to the nuts I was there so now what happens is let me go back to this so I told you about I went to see Jack Morandini it's May Flanners or uh, Brian Collins says have a nice day John boy we got our lefties okay so now we get into Portland Oregon and I'm bowling and I bowl like crap I average like 180 for the week the lefties didn't have a chance and that's okay and John Jotty comes over and he says and John was always the kind of guy that would tell you exactly what he thinks. And God bless him. I love him. And I think he loved me too. He especially loved my wife because, you know, he just, a lot of people did. And, um, and she's an angel. So I understand it too. Anyway. So he comes up to me, he says, what are you doing? I said, what are you talking about? He says, Brunswick is not going to sign you. Get it out of your head. Get it out of your head. Will you stop? Okay. And I said, what do you want me to do? He says, Throw some freaking bowling balls. Throw some other stuff. Come on. What are you doing? He goes, and you're not throwing the ball right either. You're not leading with the ring finger. You're not, you're turning it early, you know, and he, and he said, come on, let's go bowl. So I went out and practice and I drilled some new balls. I drilled out this, the beast, which was their top ball at the time, because they were still behind at the moment, John. You know what I mean? They were not quite, Brunswick had it figured out, mm -hmm. had the teal and the purple, and they had the quantum and, and they had a good thing going. And, Columbia um, was close with like the power torque, but they were just kind of like dancing, just a couple couple legs behind. They weren't there. They weren't there yet. They were close. And uh, so so I drill out a beast, and uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Dennis. He's a great bowler. You know what you know about him? A lot of people don't know. He would look down the lane practically at the pins. He didn't look all over the lane like I did. I'd look all the way from the foul line to different areas. I, I used depth. Lickstein taught me that. You'd have to look close to roll it earlier. You'd have to look down the lane. We'll get into that in a minute, but I, I could keep rattling on. You guys are going to kick me off the show because I'm never going to shut up. But anyway. Nope. Absolutely. So we had Danny Wiseman on, so we're good. We have okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Danny, uh, anyway, so we uh we get to um we get I'm in Portland. Leslie's still home with Anthony. I bowl like crap. What are you gonna what are you doing? Come on, he takes me out in practice, okay? So I drill up a beast and I drill up this new ball that AMF had called the RPM, the Ninja RPM. It's like a purple ball. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the ball you used in Reno when you won. So we get to Reno and John, oh. works out, and John, it's okay. No, you're fine, Johnny. You're fine. <laughs> John works out. John, Johnny works out with me again. And uh, he says, he, and he was big on, he did not want to see me turn early. He wanted me to lead with the ring finger and drive it down to my target. He was a firm believer in that. And, and, and he said, also, he said, I want you to get the ball down and get it up in the swing so you can let gravity work. You're coming here and you're kind of holding on to it. I want you to hold it low, get it up, get it up in the swing and let, and let gravity do it. Okay. So I start catching a rhythm. So I end up bowling that week and um, I would average the field again by 10 pins a game. With this time, I ran away with it. I, I beat Walter by 360 pins over second. And I was using the, this, you know, Del Warren was on the staff at the time for AMF and drilling out all kinds of, I probably got like seven or eight balls. Maybe it was like 14 by the end of the week, all types of different layouts, pin positions, surfaces, four by two, five by four, blah, 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 blah. You know, all the stuff that he would just babble on right there. Yeah. That's Anthony. Yeah. 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 I had hair there just a little bit. So we we uh, so we get into the title match right now. I want Walter bad. I mean, I want him bad. He just you know, I gave it to him. I gave him one in Japan. I completely cheese balled it in Japan. I bowled 180 against his two, and he bowled like dirt, like doo doo. Okay, no disrespect. God bless him. Okay, and then I did the same thing in Erie in 1993. I led the tournament in Erie with a short approach, and I let him off. Okay, and I'm like, mm. you know what I mean? I want him bad so and he's got the nuts he shoots 270 against soper after soper bowls 300 he bowls adam a 
bowls 245, opens in the 10, could have shot back-to-back 270s. And he's just like, right up five, here we go. Here we go. Okay, we go. got a hang spot in the left lane. So anyway, we start out, I go like flat seven, double, three, six, nine, right? Could have been three, six, seven, nine. And uh, he comes out with the front five, front six. So now I say to myself, he's got you. It's all right. At least this time, don't be an ass. Bull good game. Don't just bowl a good game. Let's get out of here with respect, at least. Because he's going to bowl 300 at me. I mean, he's just it, it telling you. So I end up throw the number ball. I throw the – I got the sixth frame and seventh frame. So now I got, uh, what, 67 in the fourth with a triple. Here he goes. He throws the ball in the left lane after the sixth one. Bucket. Hmm. Okay. All right. Now I got 267 in the wood. He's got 276 in the wood. All right. Well – Maybe. Anyway, throw another couple more. I'm getting lined up on the left lane. So now he goes up, he strikes on the right lane, goes up in the 10th frame, or the ninth frame, I apologize. Bucket. Are you freaking kidding me? How the frick did he just do this again? And he comes off the approach, you can hear him say, I can't believe I did that again. And I go, I can't either. How the frick did he do this? I mean, you got to be kidding me. And I'm I'm going, oh, my God, I gotta, I'm going to take him out. I'm going to take him out. But now I make, I and the score wrong. I'm adding the score wrong. I think he's got front five, and he could shoot 256, okay? So I get the one in the ninth. You know, I do my shot, hit chicks the pants. Yes, you know, I'm all excited. I'm all happy. Right? I th- and then I throw the one out. I think the first ball in the tenth is for the win, right? Because I think he can only shoot 240, and I'm going to shoot 250. So I throw the first one. I gave it my Sunday best, run it out on my knees the way I always wanted to my whole life. Here we go. Bam, strike, winner, chicken dinner. How's it? How's it going? Your man, your man, because they're all over him. They wanted him to win. It's okay. And I'm like, that's your man, your man. I'm pointing up in the screen. I'm just screaming. I'm going nuts, right? And I look over to the left, and there's a score. And I said, oh, shit. Oh, my God, he can shoot 256. I need the next one the 10th. I need the next one the freaking 10th. So that shot you showed almost goes in the gutters because my heart was beating about 167 beats a minute. <laughs> Act of God that that ball stayed on the lane and struck. I swear, right? So that was that. You know, and I tell you, man. It wasn't just an area check. That was like a legit hope my arm it stays on That was a legit realization. Oh, my God, I need this one, and I just – exerted all of my energy on the one I thought I needed. Thank you. Which is what which your dad would tell you never to dunk. do. Yeah. You yeah. never never pop the cork until you've won the tournament. And don't do that. And I would pride myself on that as much of a spaz as I could be at certain times. <laughs> I would hold myself in. Control. I'm not taking a victory lap when I got, you know, when I got the 440 in front of me. I got another lap here. Absolutely. Oh, God. So when I look up and I go, Oh shit! I just popped my cork. I can't believe this. I got to throw another strike. I can't believe. That's so a fantastic my uncle, story. uncle Larry passed away that week, so I think he kept that ball in the lane. I swear to God, he kept that ball in the and lane. made it turn to the right because that and it, and yeah. it was high flush too. I mean, it was it looked well. Totally and I made the mistake. I made the mistake of saying on TV, I had practically the whole lane this week. You know, I never saw that ever again the rest of my career. Last <laughs> time ever. Saw oh, really, Miley? You had the whole lane. You couldn't have said I was throwing the ball well this week. You had to say I had the whole lane. But I was just being honest. I had, I had a fairway that was wide with no rough. As, as lesson learned. Well, how it, what, what, <laughs> squeaks, squeaks would say, Chris Warren. Oh man, he got the wheel of fortune with no bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's a fa- I mean, I just thought you were fired up. You threw the first one. You're fired up. You threw the oh, second yeah. One. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, and, and, uh, and, then, and, then, like, for the and then, you know what, for the yeah. rest of our, for the rest of our marriage, I still, Leslie sees that and she goes, go sit down because what happened is I'm all pumped up and I still got another shot to go. She goes up, gives me a hug and she's kissing me and I go, go sit down, go sit down. I'm not done yet. Go sit down. And she's like, 
you embarrassed me in front of everybody. I can't believe. So now when she sees it, yeah, go sit down, go sit down. She still hasn't forgiven me to this day for that. (laughs) I mean, it was only on national television. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, I got the most beautiful girl in the world. I got the most beautiful girl in the world, this wife of mine, and I'm putting her through absolute. And she goes, I should just leave. I'm going to go in the parking lot. I'm going to find someone out there else. This guy just told me to go sit down. Come on. What a putz. You know John, I mean? I, I've learned in 18 years of marriage, women don't forget anything at all. No, ever. Dude. And, it, and, and they'll bring it up when they'll bring it up right when they need to. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's that's their ace in the that's hole. a gift, isn't it? It's just, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got that card right here. It's like, like the get out of jail free ace. card. Here's that ace. Yep. You got big boy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, maybe. How about I just go sit down? Maybe I'll do that. You no, know, you know. Honestly, when it comes to when it comes to my marriage, our marriage, you know, I'm really blessed because when I was a young man, a young pup, you know, I was bowling men's leagues at 16, and my father-in-law at that time was bowling a lot of leagues locally in tournaments, and he was a good bowler too. Bowled the PBA, joined the PBA in '82, and I did, and uh, he was. Uh, you know, good bowler. And he'd make, he'd make 24s in, in the regionals and he'd make some caches on tour and he really loved to bowl, but he had a family and he had a career and he did what everyone else did in Detroit. They had a family. They did what they could when they could and they could bowl occasionally. Sure. So, uh, and so anyway, now what happens, you know, his daughter, Leslie, is... Uh, my mother-in-law, Carol, we're having dinner, a breakfast one morning. We're bowling a tournament. And she pulls out this picture, this picture of this beautiful young lady. And he said, look at our daughter. And I said, oh, my God, can I have her phone number, please? And I called her that night, right? So that was when she was 18. So we're, I'm about six and a half years older than her. So we started dating in 1990. And... Three months later, I told her father, I'm in love with your daughter. And he said, shut up. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> well, that's his daughter, right? Mm-hmm. And as your dad probably knows that, Johnny. Oh, yeah. Dads don't give up the daughters ever. And he would say to me, he says, listen, you have a son. You have a son. A son is a son till he takes a wife. A daughter is a daughter for the rest of your life. And that's the way that she's been. And she's, you know. That's right voted to her father and rightfully so you know he's a good man and uh but uh we we got along really good really good until i told him i'm in love with your daughter then it was all of a sudden i was on the other side of the fence i was somebody <laughs> trying to break in i was somebody trying to break in right but we gotten over it we gotten through it you know and it's been uh it's been a great marriage we've been blessed you know our our four kids you know so life's good you know and it was it i think i look back at some things that the bowling career and I kind of felt like there was, you know, I had a little bit of Rocky in this, the whole thing. You know, there was this guy that just wasn't getting it right, you know, kind of just not quite, not quite, not quite. And then, then Leslie, Leslie took me over the top. Um, it just was, I got a little crisper. I got a little sharper, you know. Um, we got there. We got to the top. Anthony came along. And w- when she was pregnant with Anthony, I went nuts. You know, I, I, I could not focus. Like I said, I was in a ma- miserable slump. I called her from Earl's place. And I said, I'm coming home. She goes, what are you doing? You got to defend next week. You won in Fresno last year. I said, I called Mike Connor already and I retired. I'm gone. I'm coming home. I can't make a living. I got a kid on the way. I'm not making money. I'm gone. I'm done. That's it. And I came home and I worked in a pro shop at a local country club. Max Adani had hired me in to work the pro shop. Greatest sanctuary. And I needed it. I needed to get home and I needed to see my son more. And the minute that happened, everything got into frame. Now I know where I'm at. Now I know what I'm going to do. I know how this is going to work. I got my ball back out of the bag. I started bowling. My father-in-law, my mother-in-law bowled with me, Leslie bowled. We went out and things started happening. She says to me, and I got I got to, I just, I'm telling you, I got to give her a lot of credit for this. She convinced me to bowl a regional at bowl one in Troy. And, um, she says, listen, you won last year. You got a free entry. Why don't you bowl? Okay. I go and bowl, and um, I finish third, make 1500 Okay? Now, keep in mind, I'm only making 500 a week working in the pro shop, working for Max Adani as an assistant pro. Okay? She goes, I'll tell you what. You know what? I want to tell you what I think. I think you're making a mistake. 
I think you're a lot better than you think you are. I think you need to go back out. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be home with Anthony. Go do your job. I want you to go back out. Go bowl three tournaments. Take the 1500. If it doesn't work out, I won't say another word. We'll call it a day. I'm okay. But I think there's a lot left. There's a lot left out there. So I went out to Bone Phoenix. I like started, Rocky and Adrian. I'm telling you. I'm telling yeah. you. So I went out to I went out to Phoenix. I stayed with Arnie Goldman and his family, his mom and dad, and I've known Arnie forever. We could have a billion stories about him. Um, so he's watching me bowl, and he gets done. He's got to bowl the high roller, which subsequently he ended up winning. Um, so he says, Moss, he says, you're not bowling smart. I'm watching you bowl. You're just not bowling smart. You're not. Okay. So we get to Vegas, and the left's playing pretty good. Art McKee's out there. We drill some rhinos. The purple rhino, this is when it, everything just started to happen. And uh, I finish eighth, just missed TV. I make 4,000. I got 4,000 in my pocket. I'm like, holy cow. Okay. All right. We get to the next week. We bowl Dallas. Now, Dallas was funky. It was like overdrive. It was overblocked on the left. I'm bowling Jason Couch, and everybody's throwing reactive. And I said, you know what? I'm going to try that black rhino. So they had the black rhino, Junior. You know what I'm talking about? When they came out, they had, the, they had the teal, they had the purple, and they had the black rhino. Well, I'm throwing. Oh, you were talking about the black rhino pro. Yes. Oh. I'm throwing the so engraving, not the original. Like, I, I got a sanded black rhino pro loaded wow. up, and I got I'm bowling on this over block, and it's as smooth as silk. I end up making the top 24. I'm the only lefty to get a check, and I end up bowling for TV. I get knocked out. Okay, I make like five grand. And Carol Letty is over to my right, Frank Esposito, Chris Schenkel, Nelson Burton. They always would sit where guys would bowl for the show. They would all sit there. They'd go out to dinner. They'd come back, and they would sit there for the last game. They'd come in, right, because they'd be introduced as who's going to produce the show next the next day. And I'm getting my ass beat. I got Thayer's beat me. Weber's going around me, and I'm done, right? And I am spitting bullets because now this is two weeks in a row. I got it, and I, I'm not going to get there. So I look at Carol. Eddie. God is my witness. And I said, Carol, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to come out next week with my wife and my son. And I'm going to tell you right now, I guarantee you, I am going to win. I promise you, I am going to win next week. It's a Joe Willie quote right there, or a Mark Messier right there. Jesus. Now, this was not scripted. This just came out of me because I had a lot, you know, you guys know by now I got a lot of emotion at times. And I said what I thought and I, and I meant what I said. So now we get to Peoria, and here comes Mo Pinnell. Mo Pinnell. God rest his soul. God rest his soul. Johnny. You know, and Mo drilled me a couple balls when I finished third in the regional and made 1,500. You know, they were like the Turbo X, if you guys remember that ball, the reactive, first reactive ball that Ebonite came out with, right? Yeah. He says, I got a new ball. I got a new ball. It's called the Ninja. He says, I'm going to drill you one. Now, meanwhile, I don't want to break his heart. I got the nuts. I just got done finishing eighth and eighth with Brunswick. I got it all figured out. I don't need a flipping thing. Honest to God. So I said, okay, whatever, drill a ball, right? He drills me a ball. He comes in. I go in the I go in the truck. He comes walking out of the park, out of the parking lot. He goes, Did you get your ball? I go, what ball? He goes, I drilled you a ball. I go, you drilled me a ball. Oh, frick. It's going to take me 45 minutes to work out a ball, okay? It's 8 o'clock in the morning. I got a ball at 9 a.m. I don't, I don't even want to freaking – I don't even want to work this ball out. He's going, you better work the ball out. <laughs> work the freaking ball out. He drills me a one-inch pin over the label. Who the frick is going to drill you a one-inch pin over the label? Are you <laughs> serious? Not many. Come on. Come on. Of all <laughs> the things Mo's done, he's drilling me a one-inch pin over the label with no hole? Where did he come up with that one? So I, so I, I, I was using turbo. Okay. And turbo made a, 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 um, an oval slug for me because I had a really flat thumb. I still do to this day. And I'm working this thing. I got hammering 45 <laughs> flipping minutes working this ball. I'm cussing. And are you son. clock watching too? Like, you're oh, like, yeah, you're like, you, like, I, beat the I, knew how, coming. like <laughs> I knew how long it's going to take. So we got the ball and I'm just cussing freaking mo, freaking mo. I don't want to freaking work this freaking ball out, you know? We get to, so now we both qualifying. Don't you know what I use? And I got this much playing right around 10 to, you know, between 10 and 15, throwing this one inch pin and 
I shoot like 220 over lead the squad. Okay. Mo comes up to me and says, I got you. Don't worry. I got you the rest of the way. I said, what do you mean you got me? I said, I'm still throwing other stuff, right? I'm thinking I'm going to throw a Brunswick ball or something, whatever. I'm not buying into anything at this point. I'm just, right? So the righties are crushing it. I'm, I go from like first to seventh, you know, because A and B, you guys know how disparaging things happen. It's no big deal. But I'm still happy. I bowl good. Don't get, don't get me wrong. So he drills me four more balls in between blocks. He goes, you better come back an hour and a half early. I go, fuck, are you kidding me? I can't do this. I can't freaking do this. So, so anyway, he drills me. I got three more. I got, I'm working them out. I got, now I got him. Now he's got all the exotics. He's got me going. He's got axis leverage, hole below pitch, junior. Got it. With the hole pitched, John had to be pitched. What the frick is pitched? Are we serious? I'm thinking, what is this? Right. He goes, don't worry about it. So he puts, you know, we had the mill hole. So he puts the number in the mill hole. This is number one. This is number two. This is number three. This is number four. He goes, this one's going to go the earliest, and this one's going to go the longest, All right? So, okay. Were they so, all sumos, John? Huh? Were they all sumos? They were all ninjas. Oh, all sorry. Ninjas. Ninjas. That's okay. It's okay. That was their first reactive ball. Right. Right. So, anyway, I'm bowling the second block, and I'm throwing, you know, the ninjas, and I'm throwing this one ball, and the one with the axis below hole pitched, somehow the thumb sleeve comes loose. I throw a shot, I nut it, and it's going down the lane. And it goes, Poop, and it gets, and it gets, the it picks off the four seven. And he yeah. looks at my wife. He goes, "What the frick happened?" And I go, "My fricking slug just fell out of my fricking ball. That's what just fricking happened." So he goes and runs to the pad. I get some more glue. He's putting the glue in there. I'm waiting for about blowing on the thing, thing right. And uh, so I wait about a minute. Everybody's going, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'm with my." I got my freaking thumb hole's got to dry. I don't want the glue to come off, right? So anyway, I throw another ball. You know what freaking happens, right? It comes out again, zero for the frame, the next shot. I look at him. I said, get this freaking ball out of my hands. I throw it up at him. I throw it up at him in the stands. He's in the stands next to Leslie. And Leslie's holding Anthony. I throw the ball at him. Right? <laughs> and she but you said, got good aim, so that's good. And he goes, your husband's a freaking nut job. You know, I'm not going to say the word, but you can imagine the word. He says, your husband's a freaking nut job. And she goes, you got bad breath. So, <laughs> love Leslie. And I love Mo. God rest his soul. So anyway, so now, so now. You can slam, we, don't worry. Well, so anyway, we get through this whole thing. So now what happens is we go and we make top 24, qualified like 10th. I got to third going into, going into Friday morning. I bowled good. Didn't touch that ball again. That ball's gone from my mind. Gone from my mind. I wake up the next morning. It's Friday morning. I got the flu. I'm going to withdraw. I'm, I'm not kidding you. And I've never in my life it withdrawn out of a tournament, especially when I'm bowling good. Never. Never draws, Never came to my mind. So I, I come in and he looks at me and he goes, what the hell is your problem? I said, I'm sick. I'm going to withdraw. He goes, you're not withdrawing. I said, yes, I am. I can't walk. I can't walk. I'm going to be, I'm sick as a dog. I got something and I don't just hold on. He goes to the snack bar and he goes in the back and he uncouples the CO2 and the Coke syrup. And he fills up a cup this thick with Coke syrup. And he it's comes supposed to coat your stomach and supposed to relieve like nausea and everything. That's it's an old thing they used to do back in the 50s. That's our doctor. So he says, drink this. I ain't freaking drinking that. What the shit is it? He goes, it's Coke syrup. It's going to save your bacon. All right. So I'm like, I drink this down. About 10 minutes goes by. My stomach calms down. I can't believe it. I'm starting to feel a little better. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm okay. And don't, don't you know that block, I shoot like 350, almost 400 over for the block in match play. I went 8-0 that morning. Don't you know what ball I used? The freaking ball that I threw up to him in the stands. Oh was the my God. The, the glue dried at least. That's all. <laughs> so now I got, now we go, now we're in the, now we got a shot at, at leading the tournament. Right. And and I go out the next that night we had, we you know, it went and got some pasta. I slept for an hour and a half, two hours, which is exactly what I needed. Bold the night block, the match play. And I shoot 270, 270 right out of the gate. I'm just, I'm back. 
I'm, I'm, I'm playing fourth and fifth arrow. I'm literally looking at the freaking head pin. I'm looking that far down the lane. I'm throwing BBs with a sanded ball, and I got the chomps. I mean, I got, I got this, right? So we get to the show. I end up leading the tournament. So now we get to the show. <clears throat> Albies on TV, Tony Westlake, and Norm. And Norm is throwing champions. He's throwing their urethane ball, their black urethane. The weapon? Yeah. I throw a ball, and you know, Albie can throw the ball pretty soft and roll the ball pretty heavy in the front, and he's got a beautiful look. And I'm throwing a ball, I can't even flip and hit the 10. I can't even hit the head pin. I'm I'm kissing, I'm kissing a two pin in the face. Mo goes, give me the ball balls. And I got six balls. Okay. He says he went in the paddock and he was looking for sandpaper, and he saw this bathtub safety mat. I don't know what grit that is. I'd say it's 100 to 200. And he said, well, the Lord hates a coward. He says he puts it on all the balls. <laughs> he put it on all the balls, sanded the crip out of them. And I throw the first ball, and I pick off the 10 pin. I look at <laughs> I'm, I'm getting ready to go here. We're bowling for 20 minutes. I'm getting warm-ups, and I pick off the freaking 10 pin. And I go, well, you're freaking killing me, dude. You know. And he says, just throw them. You know, sounds so like a test. Oh, it sounds like a test of your metal almost. Like he, well, maybe he had some evil geniusness going on about it. Yeah. So oh, he we, certainly we, has that. Oh yeah. yeah. So we 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 um we bowl and bowl and now we work a little oil into the in the in the in the cover. Naturally, once you start getting a little oil, then it smooths out a little bit, right? Yep. So I want to tell you this is you know, and I love Norm Duke and a lot of respect for him. I got to tell you what I did here. It's this is straight up, right? So in 1991, we're bowling a Japan Cup. Okay. And for some odd reason, I decide I'm not going to practice on the TV pair. I'm the only lefty there. I'm, I'm leading the tournament. I'm not, I got it figured out. I don't need to broadcast what I'm going to do. I'm just going to practice on the practice pair, which is to the left. Interesting. So Norman Ozio decided they're going to throw the ball for a half hour at the two pin. Mm. It just so happened they wanted to take two pin practice that day for a half hour. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm watching them. I look at Campos and I go, you think that's right what they're doing? Wait, so they're they're slopping something up, I would think, right? I assume. They're and carrying that's the oil down. Doing. Let's be honest. They're carrying the oil down. They weren't basically, sure. this is long before they started doing it when the PBA introduced the rounds of 64 and 32 when mm -hmm. the guys were trying to do it. So this is like apparently not a newer thing. That, it was that taboo. It was, let's be honest, with probably. I'm coming from the generation where, what are you doing? You're going to mano we mano, we're going to bowl. You yeah, right, right, right. Don't, 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 kind of, don't. This is the first time, and Arnie used to tell me, Arnie Gold used to say, this stuff happens, because he would bowl in other tournaments, and he'd see this, and he goes, yeah, I, I threw the ball down the right. So, and I ended up bowling. I'm, I had a hang spot, and I bowled like crap on TV, bowl 180, lost to Walter, and um, but I didn't forget that. So now yeah. I'm bowling Norm. I'm bowling Norm, and Norm's throwing this urethane ball in the track. Okay, I got six balls. Don't you know I throw three of them on the right lane with my urethane ball right at the 10 pin. Hmm, hmm, Super sanded. Damn. And you know he left two flat 10s and a 4-9. Even. Or even. That's awesome. it. That's what happened. And you know what? And then that's that's the one you see me running them out. And I, I beat Norm. And God bless him. It's war. I got a I'm wife and son. No way. I'm yeah, don't take off my not, table I'm because like, you have to do something that extracurricular wise. Well, he did it to me. He did it to me. Now he may deny it. God bless him. It's my opinion. I got nothing against him. He did it. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. yeah. Norm, Norm was always known for a minute. Anybody he, he did the gamesmanship, right? Didn't he? Oh, like, right. Uh, he was still he guy down. And he was six still guy down. Pitch against, uh, against Goebel in, in the 94 true value. If you guys ever watched that show, go back to the ninth and 10th frame after Duke led by an insurmountable amount of pins. He yeah. broke every single scoring yeah. record that week. Yeah. He gets up in the ninth frame and double fouls deliberately. Yeah. And he'll tell you, deliberately stepped over that foul line, went yeah. out of his way to make sure he knew yeah. he was going to throw the back four for 280. But he yeah. wasn't sure that if Brian, that Brian Goble would be able to throw the he first to win. He tried to ice him. Oh, he, he tried, tried to ice him just, just like they ice him. Oh, yeah. In a yeah. football game for for you know the the last field goal to win the game and Norm Listen. is always there's a reason Norm's one of the greatest action players ever. It's because he's trying to he knows his physical talents, but he's trying to beat you. He's, he's trying to get your brain. He's going to get your net. 
And listen, he's a great bowler. He's one of the greatest of all time. Oh, I'm not going to take nothing away from him. But I didn't want to – I will tell you that I um, I had to do what I did because he just got done shooting 250, and I didn't have the greatest of looks, and I did what I had to do to protect my family, and that's what I did. And I got my wife, and I got that little one in my – in Lorinda Benoit's arms holding Anthony. Yep. He's 14 weeks old, and I'm taking on the world. It's us against the world now. I got to, the saying, I'm going home broke. I'm going to have to figure this shit out now because this is all I got. I got her and I got him. And here we go. And that was it, you know. And that was a, it was a great ride. It was a great run for a lot of things, you know. And, uh, you know, so I gave you guys a lot of that. You know, I'm sure I've been running. That's a hell of a story, man. That's 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 a great story, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, you look. figure out a way to keep us quiet for almost two hours. Yeah, that never happens. That never yeah. happens. Usually I, I we're look, screaming and hollering. And uh, you know what? I get to a point where you get, I, I look back at things and there were certain points of capitulation, I call them. Like, for example, when I was on tour in 85 and I was a rookie um, bowling full time and broke in Florida. And I was down in Sarasota at the U.S. Open. Uh, home and uh, beat Webb, and I'm broke. I'm, I'm going home. And Arnie looks at me, and Arnie says, what are you doing, Moss? I said, I'm going home. I said, I'm going to go work for my dad. I'm going to uh, go into window business. My dad had a successful window company. And I said, I'm going, to, I'm going to be in sales. I'm going to go back home. This is not, it's, it didn't work out. He goes, you got to you got to go to Dick Weber Lanes. I said, I ain't going to Dick Weber Lanes. He says, you got to go to Dick Weber Lanes, a left side place. You got to go. One more term, you got to go. I go, I don't have the money, Arnie. I'm broke. He goes, call your dad. I go, call my dad and do what? He goes, tell him to Western Union you seven hundred dollars. I go, Arnie, I never asked my dad for anything in my life. I'm and not in 1985. This this is a this is it's a chunk. That's a chunk. Oh, no, I asked him for a twenty for gas. Yeah, right, right, right. So I asked the buffet. <laughs> so Arnie convinces me to call my father, and I call my dad and I said, Dad, I need a favor. I said, I need to borrow seven hundred dollars from you. What for? I said, I got a bowl in St. Louis, dad. I said, but I promise you, if it doesn't work out, I'm going to come home and I'll go to work for you. Because my dad had had worked his ass off and, and built a great company. And he, I was going to be the heir apparent. And um, he, he said, uh, okay, if this doesn't work out, I got to plug in my computer. Hold on. All right. Commercial break. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, you're going to be out here until midnight. I might be out until midnight, Marco. Marco's all mad because he wants to play. He wants to play Fortnite, and if he goes on Fortnite, do you hear that in the background? Hey, tell him I want. Tell him I want to also. Just, just okay. so I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm taking you from your Fortnite crowd, John. So anyway, we. Um, so Johnny's anyway, screen name is Fancy Pants 012. For don't Fortnite. tell him that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so my my so dad says, "All right, I'll tell you what. I'll give you the money, but if this doesn't work out, you're coming home next week." I said, "I promise." So now Arnie and I set out. Now, for you guys that don't know Arnie very well or at all, I will tell you that Arnie is probably the greatest survivor on God's green earth to the Pro Bowlers Tour. Arnie had a very old Winnebago. And when I mean very old, it made Breaking Bad look like a freaking Mercedes Benz. Okay. So we decide to take off in Sarasota, Florida for St. Louis in Arnie's uh, motorhome. And he had a 1961 Beeline trailer in the back of it because he was drilling balls for himself and some other guys because him and Litchie got into a flaming argument and he was never going to drill balls in Litchie's truck ever again. <laughs> and here we go. And here we are on our way down. We get to Tennessee, Chattanooga. We stop. It's Arnie's 29th birthday. We celebrate his birthday. We have a nice meal. We set out. I'm in the back trying to sleep. He's driving all of a sudden. What's going on? I said, Arnie, something's going on in the back. Something's going on in the back. He pulls over. He's got a flat. He's got a flat on the back of his trailer. I said, well, you got a spare. I ain't got a spare. Oh. I mean, and it's bitter cold out. It's got to be, I mean, it's like zero, I swear. And so he finds a way to pump some air in it. We get going a little further and um, dead, done. So we pull over to the side of the freeway. I don't know what major highway we were on, but... He pulls off and unhooks the trailer and he starts getting back on the freeway. And God is my witness. Here comes Billy Hall driving Litchie's rig. <laughs> so Arnie says, I'm going to get you with Billy. So I know you get to St. Louis. 
I'm going to catch up to him and I'm going to have him take you to St. Louis. That way I know you're going to make it. Okay. That's, that's the kind of guy Arnie was. He wasn't worried about him. He said, I'm going to get you there. So he speeds up and I'm telling you, this shit is shaking. This whole damn thing is shaking. I think we're going to die. I mean, he's going 90 miles an hour. Billy must have saw him and said, oh, hell no. I'm out of here. He's going 100. He's gone. He saw us in the back. And he's like, I don't have nothing to do with Arnie because he knew what, you know, his motorhome was. So now, oh, now I'm like, I'm heartbroken. I said, we're screwed. We got, we're not going to make it to St. Louis. And my dad just gave me this money and I, I'm not even going to bowl. So I don't know how the hell he does this. But he's driving around the backwoods of Tennessee, and he finds this farmhouse, and he comes out. He says, Maz, Maz, I got some tires. I go, what do you mean you got some tires? He says, this guy's got tires in his in his barn, and he just gave me some tires. We're all set. Hooks it up. Boom. We get there at 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, now I got a bowl of rabbit the next morning, right? <laughs> we got 120 guys. We got 120 guys for 10 spots. I got in at 3 o'clock in the morning. I got up at 5.30. My roommate was Dan, Eber Dan Eberle. For any of you who know Daniel Eberle, Dan's the guy that lost to Bobby Chamberlain in the national championship in 1984. Okay? Oh, wow. Nice guy from New York. Had a bump out swing, kind of flipped it a lefty. Good little bowler. Anyway, <laughs> I wake up and Danny is stark naked, looking at the mirror, brushing his teeth. Hey, look at, what is this? I just woke up. I got to see you like this right now? Right. We get to the bowling center. It's 730 in the morning. Right. I am just I'm I'm done. Right. I'm like, oh, my God, how am I going to do this? I'm a you're not going to overthrow the ball. That's for sure. I mean, no, you're dead I, tired. I, I want you, you, you can imagine how tired I must have been. Right. I was completely exhausted. No sleep. Yeah. Right. So what do I bowl? 145, my first game. So now I got 130 in the eighth. I always remember this because I, I just know this was a turning point for me. I got 130 in the 8th and the 8th frame of the second game. And I got my head between my legs, and I'm crying. And I'm going, this is it. I'm done. It's over. My dreams, this is you know, what I'm meant to be. I wanted to be a pro bowler. This ain't going to happen. It's over. So, something uh, inside. I'm sorry? How many games was the rabbit? The rabbit was two five-game blocks back then, Junior. We bowled, two, we bowled five. The other squad would bowl, and we'd come back and bowl another five. Okay, continue. Sorry. So they got 145 and I got 130 in the eighth. So I'm crying and I'm done. I'm done. So the voice inside of me says, you're not giving up without a fight. If we're going down, we're going down swinging. We're going down swinging, right? I move out to the gutter. Boom. I move out. Boom. Strike out. Ninth and tenth. Shoot 190. All right. Maybe I got to walk. Salvage. I got Hey, I know. I'm, throwing, I'm throwing the GTB, Brunswick GTB. Remember that ball? Did your dad ever tell you about that? Yeah, one? The rubber court. Let's go. That ball was was a great ball. That was a great ball. That was a great ball. So anyway, next game I can shoot 270. I open in the tenth, 245. Okay. Next game, I bowl 279. Excellent. Okay. Fifth game, I bowl my first 300 on tour. Joe wow, Hutch so great 70 guy. over after being 50 under for two. Joe Hutch comes up, gives me a big hut, and says, Maz, you're amazing. You know, you know, and I never forgot that, you know, about Joe Hutch. He's always a, a good egg in my book. God bless him. You know, I live by him up in the uh, Clark Summit area. Still bowls well, league. Still have you ever league. talked to him? Have you ever had conversations with him? He's got some of the most epic conversations I've ever heard. Dude. We've had he can make a dead person laugh. That guy's so funny. He's just incredibly yeah, it's funny. Something, something special. Yeah. So anyway, I end up leading the rabbit. End up as it turned out, I end up making my first top twenty-four, and we got to the next week in Prairie. And here's this young man, and he ended up missing the rabbit. And uh, he said, "It's okay, Maz. I'm going to be out next week. I'm going to stay out here for a while." That was Parker Bone the third. Oh yeah. Uh, wow. We all, we all know what's going on, here, right? That one. But anyway, that was a point. There was that was there was a couple more, and I'll go through it real quick if you want. But um, we got to we we got to eighty eight. I had won a big tournament between um, Dallas and New Orleans. I won fifty thousand. There was a tournament called the U.S. National Scratch Championship. It was between tour stops, and um, so uh, everything was great financially. But um, all of a sudden, I'm not bowling well. They got the strip up. 
on the left. And, you know, the righties were back then were Brian Voss, uh, Tony Westlake, Dave Ferraro. Boom. They're all playing up this strip. If you guys, it was an up seven, eight strip. And that's what it was all summer because Lon just got fired and we don't have a lane means crew. So they just kind of kept doing it this way. Right. So I get in, I'm bowling like shit. I'm done. We get to Edmond, Oklahoma, and I have decided I'm done. I'm going to go home. This is it. I, you know, I've, I've, I've never made TV. I've made 24s. I just, this is not going to happen. I'm not doing this. I'm just, I can't do it. So I'm in the bar. I walk in the bar, decide I'm going to have a beer. And I'm going to leave the next morning to go home. And here comes Denny Schreier. And I'll keep in mind, I've never made TV at this point. Now, Denny knew me. And was he the, he was the announcer for ESPN, I think? Or was that? Yes. That was him, yes. him, him Denny was the four. Denny was involved as coordination, the director of, um, oh, goodness gracious. He was involved with all of the media. Gotcha. For a him, long time. him and Albie he would do the ESPN pro, uh, events, I think, if that was, if I'm not mistaken. Left that, left that post, got hired by ESPN. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And it was also doing, he did it with, with, with Earl and also with yes. uh, Mike Durbin. Yep. And he also did women's golf. Denny's a mm -hmm. phenomenal announcer. He was like an Andy North and type. He, he would bounce around. He would do golf, uh, bowling. Uh, uh, right. So he comes in, comes in the bar and he says, John Mazza. I said, hey, Denny, how you doing? He goes, what's the matter? I said, Denny, I finally come to grips. This is not, it's not going to work out. I, I just got to own it. I'm going to own it. I'm going to go home. And I went back. I'm going to go. And my dad's telling me he wants me to take over the business. I'm going to go home. He says, huh. He goes, you want a beer? I said, yeah, I'll have a beer. He says, can I be honest with you? I said, sure. Um, he says, I think you're a lot better than you think you are. And I think you just don't have it together. I think you need to get, I think you need some help. And do you know Fred Borden is? I said, you know, I met him once down in Florida a long time ago. I don't really know him. He goes, he happens to be one of my closest friends. And um, I'd like to make a phone call for you. Would you like to meet him? I said, yeah. He goes in the press room. He comes back. A couple of minutes later, he gives me this piece of paper with a phone number. He says, give him a call. I got smoke coming out of my rear end. I go to the front of the bowling center back then where they had pay phones, right, guys? And I make the call. I call Fred. I said, hi, Fred. This is uh, John Mazza. He says, yeah, I've been expecting your call. How are you? He said, what's going on? I said, I suck. I don't know how to bowl. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I, I own it. I just, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. He says, okay. He says, where are you at? I said, well, I'm in Edmond, Oklahoma. He says, well, when are you coming back? I said, I'm catching a 7 a.m. flight tomorrow out of Oklahoma City, Detroit. He says, okay. You're going to fly home? I said, yeah. He says, all right, well, you want to come to Akron? I said, sure. He goes, all right, I'll be here tomorrow. I got there at noon. I left at midnight. I spent 12 hours with him on the lanes, off the lanes, on the whiteboard. And this guy from that point on had my back and pumped 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 and, pumped and, pumped and, and taught me everything I never knew. We started out with just one thing. He says, you're flip spin revving it. You're, you're flip topping it. That's why your ball keeps jumping out of the zone because you're flip spinning it because you got to roll. And, um, and there was something else. One of my first coaches, Paul Cito in Detroit had taught me to just to let the ball go. Don't grab on it. So he got me to do this. So about 10 minutes, I'm doing this. I'm throwing the ball in the left gutter. I mean, I'm not kidding. Everything's going in the left gutter at the arrows. Oh my gosh. Shit. This ain't going to go nowhere. Then all of a sudden one shot happens. It's like that. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Something happened. All of a sudden the ball rolled up the lane and it struck. Now another 10 minutes goes by and something's happening. And that was the start of the rest of my career. And that was it. And Freddie, he taught me everything he had. He gave me every ounce of everything he had, just like he did for your dad, just like he did for Don Johnson, just like he did for hundreds of people. And he took, he, he just, he, he, he understood that I was just a little bit, you know, too much sometimes, but he, he forgave me for what I was and he put his arm around me and boom, that was a point of capitulation for me. Right. And that was, wow. that was really important, you know, and again, if you're like, going to correlate this to Rocky, John, he was your Mickey. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's no question. He, I mean, he was your Mick. Yeah. Fred's, you know, you know, I, I you know, God bless Freddie, and um, you know he's an incredible person. We still communicate to this day, and um, 
I don't want to tell you some things that are, you know, about what's going on with him, but uh, he's got somebody right now that he's talking to that would just blow your mind away that he's actually trying to help. Well, I'll let him tell you guys when he gets a chance. You guys got to get him on this show. You need to, you know. Um, yeah, if, if, you not, could, if you could get I us could. in touch with him. If not, you might not, you, 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 maybe not by video or just by phone if you can. But um, Sure, yep, I can do that. Some incredible stories he can he can tell you guys. But that was, that was you know, so, uh, <clears throat> you know, there's points of capitulation, you know, mirroring Leslie. And things change, you know, and things get yeah. better. And, you know, those things were were everything, you know, and uh, Anthony, you know, Joseph. And then when it was time to come home, that was a point of capitulation. That was the last one. And that was when <clears throat> it was 2000. I just got done meeting with AC Delco and they were sponsoring me on the Pro Bowlers Tour. God bless those guys with Jet GM SPO. Um, I, I had them on my back the last three years of my career. They were very generous to me and helped me get home. And, and I would go two weeks and come home for a week. And, um, so the big guy there sat me down in August of 2000. He said, hey, John, we're cutting a program. I mean, what do you mean you're cutting a program? He goes, we're, we're out. We're gone. Holy shit, you're talking about AC Delco. We're talking about the AC Delco Classic, which was the first term on the Pro Tour everywhere. Yep. Yep. And then they had a fall stop. And I'm hearing this and I go, oh, my God. Oh, my God, this can't be happening. Forget about me. Forget about me and my contract. I'm worried about the tour because mm -hmm. they're pulling a million dollars out of the tour. And that's and that's that's, why, that's a point of capitulation for sure. I mean that that's for everybody too, not just you. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I'm, I'm like, holy cow! What am I going to tell my wife? I'm coming home. I can't. I don't even know how. I don't even know how to grasp this. I want to call Gerberick. I want to call Gerberick and tell him. And I can't even tell him what's going to happen. You know what I mean? And <clears throat> that's a hell of a bombshell to drop on you. Oh, you know what I mean? Oh, oh. And, and anyway, we, we, we get home. And um, so now uh, I'm putting Anthony to bed, our oldest, right? And I would have my ritual. I would put Anthony and Joseph to bed. We'd say our prayers, read a book, give him a kiss goodnight. That was it every night, okay, when I was home. So he looks at me and Anthony, he's about six, going on seven. He says, hey, Dad, you're going to go bowl on the fall tour a couple of weeks, right? I go, yeah, I got to go. He said, well, Dad, why do you got to leave? <clears throat> Ouch. I said, well, son, this is how I this is how I pay the bills. This is how I'm paying for the house. This is how I'm paying for your clothes. I'll pay for our food. He goes, oh. well, he says, Dad, can you do something else? Because I can't take it when you leave. Oh, now, at this point, gut punch. At this point in time, at this point in time, I thought everything was okay. Everything was cool. My wife never said nothing. Never a problem. Never a peep. Never a complaint. Never get home to these freaking kids. I can't take this. Nothing. I go downstairs and I tell Leslie, I said, I don't know what to tell you what I just heard from Anthony. And she goes, well, try me. I said, okay. I said, well, he told me this and this. And she says, well, that's nothing. I said, that's nothing. Well, you got to tell me what's going on here. She goes, okay, here's how it's going to go. You're going to leave in a couple of weeks and he's going to sit by that door on the garage and he's going to cry for the next four hours straight, not move. Oh. I said, that's it. I said, that's it. I'm done. She goes, you know what, John, I've always been behind you. I've always supported you. You know that. But I honestly think at this time in our lives, I think it might be a good idea if you take a look in a different direction. And I said, you're absolutely right. And I'm going to. So I had a good friend of mine in Bay City because we were living in Bay City at the time. We had owned Bay Lanes where we hosted a tour stop there in 97, 8, and 9, which I'm very proud of with Bill Strike. And I was playing golf with my buddy Craig Goslin. His name was Goose. We were golfing buddies, right, at the club. So I said, Goose, I need to make a change right now. He goes, well, what's going on? I said, I'm done. I said, I'm done. He said, okay, well, you know you like people. You love investments. I think you'd be excellent if you looked into becoming a financial advisor. You think so? Yeah. And at that time, and his wife, Carolyn, used to work for a gentleman named Bill Birch. And Bill Birch was the key manager for all of Merrill Lynch offices from Flint North. Okay. And um, I practiced and trained for three weeks. I put a list of people I knew from around the country. Uh, and I prepared myself with Craig in his house for the interview. And this is the interview for my life. Now, this is not throwing a bone ball and eating a double in the 10th. This is making myself something I've never had to be. I've got to close here. This is it. 
right? So I sit down with Mr. Birch. We're having lunch. And he's, he gets his hamburger and turns the plate a certain way. I'll never forget. He goes, it's all in the presentation. Anyway, we get to talking. And um, this is the gentleman that there was a team. There was a Wichita State football team. They all perished in a plane crash. Okay. If you guys look back in history, just so happened that Bill Birch had a busted knee. Just so happened. Oh, he wow. And he oh, didn't wow. go. Holy jeez. He ended up playing for the, he ended up playing for the Dallas Cowboys. God bless that man. Absolutely. So, so now I don't hear from him for two weeks and I'm freaking out unless he's going, what, what are you going to do? I don't know. I did a, I did this test. I didn't went to his office, did all kinds of tests, pre-test this, that, you know, what the hell am I going to do? I'm done. I'm going home. I know I'm done. Right. It's got to, I got to end it. And uh, so I call. I said, Mr. Birch, it's John Moz. He goes, what do you want? I go, I haven't heard from you in two weeks. I was just wondering what you were thinking. He goes, well, what do you want? Like, what do you mean what do I want? He goes, how much do you want? Now I got about five seconds to spit out what I want. Well, okay. Well, I guess we're going to swing for the fences. Here we go. Well, I've averaged this much for the last X amount of years. This is what I need. Okay, you got it. Here's the deal. I'm going to give you that your first year. It was over 100000 I'll tell you that. Okay. And I'm also going to give you half of that the next year. And you're going to go on your own. You're going to make it. He goes, but one thing. I'm going to give you one shot at passing the Series 7 exam. I'm going to give you six months to do it. If you fail, I am going to fire you immediately. And we're done. Oh, my kidding. God. Wow. So I said, okay. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. So now here's John and Leslie every night. Series seven book opened up every day, seven days a week, 10 to 14 hours a day. So now six months means I'm going to go into April and I'm going to take my exam. I get to December. I can't take it. I got to take it now. I can't take this. I'm not waiting no more. I got it in my head. It's all here. And it's sucked into my brain and I am going to do it right now. He goes, you take it right now and you fail. I'm telling you, you're done. I'm telling you. I said, I'm taking it right now. I went over to Lansing. Took the, So now what they did is how the Series 7 exam gives you 125 questions, the first session, and then they take, give you a break for lunch. And they give you another 125 questions. Now, the first 125, I, I, I was freaking out. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh -oh. I don't know. <laughs> Break, got a subway, got a, got a, you know, cranberry juice or something, settled down, went to the second 125 questions and crushed it. But now I don't know what I got. Now you got to press the button. I got to press the button. Here's the rest of my life right here. The most nerve wracking five seconds Holy of your life shit. is happening right there. You're, oh my God, are you, I'm shaking now. I want you to understand something. Okay. I've thrown a bowling ball for a lot of money. Okay. Yeah. I've been in front of a lot of people. I never felt pressure like that when I had to press that freaking button. To find out if I I'm, just gonna make this and I'm done. So now I press the freaking button. And, it, and it's sitting there. It's sitting there. And it's sitting there for like an eternity. And it said, hold on a minute. I'm going to fuck it. Hold on a minute. I can't oh, come on. Like they did it on purpose. Is so no then it says, there? Well, then it please move load. Yeah, so then it says, it's it's normal to put the surge into the computer. <laughs> it's funny. I love you. Ocho. Anyway, so so now what happens? You know what it says? See the administrator. Oh, oh here we go. Here we go. Now I'm gonna get now I'm gonna get, now I'm gonna get here. We're gonna sorry, Mr. Mazza. Good try. Come back next time. You know, freaking next time. He's firing my ass. I'm done. <laughs> So he goes, here you go. You passed. Oh, I passed. Oh, my God. It's just so nuts. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 90%. So I call him up. I call Leslie. She's crying. I'm crying. I can't believe this. So now, you know what he says to me? He says, okay, good job. But one more thing. I said, wait, 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 wait. Wait, no more one thing. We just did what uh -huh. you said I had to do. I'm on. He goes, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I said, what? He goes, I need you to pass your life health insurance license. And by the way, guess what? I said, let me guess. If I flunk the first time, you're going to fire me. He goes, absolutely. I go, why do you going to do this? He goes, this is what it is, bro. This is what it is. You want to be in here? This is what it is. So I said, all right, I'm going to do this. So I take one for one. I'm one for one. I got it. I'm going to do this. So we we went and I did what they call a blitz course. Five straight days, 10 hours a day in a room, 
hammering, hammering and hammering with a, a teacher. Okay. And we passed it. And, and the rest was history. And I made a life for myself, you know, and, and for my kids. And honestly, I wouldn't change. I wouldn't change anything. I I'm grateful for the opportunity to, to chase my dreams. I, I wanted to do what I did. I honestly felt there were several times where I should get my butt home. It wasn't going to work. It's the act of God, my wife, everybody around me, the angels I had in my life that kept me going, kept me going. Friends, sponsors, I mean, you know what I mean? And I'm thankful. I'm so grateful and thankful for all of it, you know. So, and then, you know, when it was time to go home, I had to go home. And I had to start a whole new life over. So I'm right now, you know, I'm pushing 60. I'm a licensed health agent here in the state of Michigan. And I talk to people every day that I talk to. And they're like, you know, I help with Affordable Care Act. And, and a lot of these people are, it's sad. They're barely getting by right now. I mean, I, I'm being honest with you. A lot of them are not getting by. And the, and, and they need they need help. And they need, need health plans. And thank God I'm able to help them. So I feel like I'm actually contributing to society. I'm helping people. And now that Marco and Ava are in ninth grade, I've also been asked, Marco asked me to join the the team and help coach Utica, which I coached Anthony and Joseph for seven years. So now I'm back in, as the Godfather would say, mm -hmm. just when I thought it was out, they pulled, they pulled me back, back. And I'm back in again, coaching. Oh, stop pounding, please. I got to stop pounding, Marco said. <laughs> anyway, guys, Wait, that's, that's John's. <laughs> yeah, it's their house. I just live here. Oh, you, you're, you're just visiting. <laughs> Maz, I could listen to you for hours, but unfortunately, we yeah. do have to wrap it up here in yeah. a second. I know. I know. I'm sorry. I, I took, I, I'm sorry to let you guys ask a lot of questions. You probably had a lot of material, and I, I couldn't shut up. Sorry. We're just going to have to have you, you, you back on. You covered everything, so basically. You hit, yeah. it, you hit it automatically. We'll have to have you back on and you know, so we can ask our questions. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah I mean, you know what? It would, uh, you know, we have, you get a, uh, we probably, we could do that anytime you want. It was fun. To, it was fun to talk to you guys. It certainly was fun to see your dad again, John a Junior. Honestly, guy that made my I figured you made my day. That after you were saying some was, nice things about him, and it, it's the the, the part. I, I will. I will really be honest with you. I I was hoping that I could see him. You know, and thrilled. To you know, in life, things happen. Things happen so quickly in life. You know, I got a chance to say goodbye. I'm not saying your dad's a bulldog. God bless him. He's going to stick around for a long time. God, God bless. Now live me. You know, my. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You know, and I got a chance to say goodbye to Jowdy. Nikki Sapiti got me on the phone with Jowdy before he passed away. And I got a chance to tell him how much I loved him and thanked him for all the stuff he helped me with. You know, I think that's important in life. You know, you got to tell the people that have been there for you. Thank you so much. Get down there and don't forget to do that, man, because that's where would we be without the people around us that helped us? All of us. We don't right? be nowhere, really. I mean, that's the truth. That's the absolute yeah. truth. That's why you know? tomorrow's so important. Really think about it. Damn right. And Matt, that's why we that's love it. bowling so much because uh, it's unlike any other sport. Bowlers are the most real, genuine people you down to earth that you will ever find, and that's the truth. I, I, met, I met some of the nicest people in the world in the bowling center. Okay. I met some of the rough people outside. I can honestly tell you, and I, I mean, some of the most warm-hearted people that I would not be here to this day if it wasn't for the good graces and the generosity of some loved ones I had in my life around me for, as from a kid all the way up. I mean, I had so many people. I'm just telling you, I'm very grateful for, for all their love and generosity to help me, well, honestly. I'm, I'm glad that you're able to tell your stories, Maz, and, and get all this on record because uh, it's important to get well, I appreciate your, your stories out there, you know? Yeah, this is here now. This is here. It's on YouTube. It's on Facebook. It's going to be forever. It's your, you're embroidered here again yeah. with, with your shows, with your electric personality, and now – you know, they put a a, a sit down to all the all the electricity that you you have going through you, man. Heck yeah. Yeah. You know what's funny? Marco looked at me one day and he says, "Hey, Dad, I'm going to go on the tour. I'm going to get a motorhome with my wife. I'm going to bowl." I go, "Oh, here we go again." <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know. I hope there's a tour. You know, I think that I'm going to give you one thought on the tour real quick. Sure. And my this is my opinion. You know, I see a lot of sports that you know you know these guys are all making a lot of money. I think one thing that the game of bowling has that they did have, and they needed, I think they need to look into it. And I even told Damon Sirocco this when I ran into him in Akron, when Fred was inducted in the hall of fame this year, I said, Damon, this is what we got to do. I need you to understand that girls, women's professional bowling and men's professional bowling needs to bowl at the same time. 
in the same bowling center and needs to be on TV at the same time. And you'd have a women's match right next to a men's match and the TV needs to be in between, just like the Dick Weber. Yeah. That's what every show needs to be. We're going to be the only sport wow. that's going to show a professional women athlete and a professional men athlete at the same time. We've got that over everybody. Bingo. We have to take advantage of that. We're the only sport that can do this. If we that's do true. this, we're going to get them back. We're going to get the sponsors back. We're going to get the respect back, but we have to do it. He goes, you're right. I said, well, then do something about it. Do so it. I'm telling all the bodies out there, the powerful people from the ABC, the USBC, the PBA, all of them. All right, friend in, my friend in Milwaukee. The, you know, we've asked everybody on here what, what their, what their idea is. You know, we've asked together. everybody. Do you and remember? Nobody has an answer. <laughs> Listen, you're the first one. You're the first one with an answer. You're the first one. Simultaneous professional competition, men's and women's. If you're telling me you can't get a sponsor when you're showing both men and women competing, shame on you. Then you can't close Absolutely. nothing. Absolutely. You can't close a door. Come on. That's it. That's what you do. That's how you promote something because that's what we're in now. This is society. Okay. Well, what about the women? What about this? Well, put them in there together. We got to do it. That's what they did. That's what made the world championship so phenomenal. Yep. Marion Ledwood was over here and Carmen Silvina was over here with Dick Weber. Why don't we do that now? What are we waiting for? Come on. And let the, and the story will write itself each yep. week. I mean, you got your, you got your story, you got your entertainment. That's what you have to bring that's the entertainment right. and the story. And once people get hooked on the story, they, they don't leave. That's we see Rocky that's, 20. It'll be Rocky 50 by the time. We're into the story, man. Let's see yeah, it. Right. Well, you know, when I had – we got some tournaments here, the junior tournaments that they, they bowl once a month, and Ava and Mark will compete. And I, and I was talking to the uh, the directors a little bit. I said, guys, we got to – It's they got the boys and girls bowling together. I said, no way. No. Girls over here. Boys over here. Girls break the lane down different. Boys break down the lane different. Because the girls are bowling on garbage. Think about it, you know. Girls gonna bowl, they're gonna burn it up, and the boys gonna bowl inside her. When the, when when the guys get done burnt, they're done. Girls have nothing, so they're, they might as well just throw a pea shooter at it. I oh. said, let's let's get some integrity back in this. And I'm not gonna say I want the boys and the girls, the men and women, to bowl in the same pair. Right. I want them to bowl on their side of the house, and I want them to bowl on their side of the house. Absolutely. And if you want to watch the women, you walk down there and watch the women. You want to watch the men, you walk to men, and that's how we get things going again. And bowl TV that's can cover favorite. all that. Bingo. I mean, it's just not hard. I mean, okay, take the field size down if you have to. Go ahead. Let's back it off if we have to. Let's get some real money. I think General Motors would come in. I mean, Mary Barra, come on. There's people out there that would buy this. They would take this and they would do it. They would do it. But you got to believe and you got to sell it that way. That's what I see. That's a great idea. That really is. It's the anyway. first one. Again, it's the first idea because everybody else says, well, we, we don't well, know. Guys, it's, it's that, different. That like a snowball and get it rolling. Get it happening. If you if they need my help, I'll come in. But that's what I see. I don't want to see this sport die. This is too much history, too many yeah. great things, too many things in the future that can happen. I mean, this is not the end with Jason Belmonte. God bless him. He's changed the game, and I get it, okay? Your dad saw it coming, by the way, in 06. He was over my house. We had him in town. There was another tour going on in the seniors. There was some kind of a tour. I can't remember the guy. He was a, a, a promoter from the East Coast. Glasses, reddish hair. You probably know who I'm talking about, Junior. Uh, anyway, he, he he did some events, and he started a, another senior tour to compete with the PBA seniors. Steve Sanders. And bingo. So anyway, so he's – your dad's here. Litchie's here. And some other guys. Ozio was here. And we all went out to dinner, and we're talking, and he said – you know, dad is down in the basement. We're playing pool. He goes, there's this guy named Jason Belmonte, man. Wait till you see him. Mm -hmm. He is insane. What are you talking about? He's insane. John, listen to me. He's throwing at 20 miles an hour. He has a 500 and blah, 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 rev rate. I go, what? Whatever. And he's like, what he's watch. Looking at. Just watch. He called it 17 years ago. He called it. He called it. it was this guy. I bowled on league with, with Johnny Sr. at that time, and he was telling anybody that would listen, anybody that would listen. He said, there's this, this guy, guy, and he whips it with two hands, and you're not going to believe how accurate he is. I was there to see it. Yeah. When I watched him bowl the tournament champions, when he came from six and did something no one else has ever done, and I watched the pattern of, of the shot, there wasn't a dispersion at all. No, nope. I've never seen anything in my life where a guy's bowling on a suspect pattern. It was not even that easy. OK, and he nutted he nutted the shots for five straight games. He nutted it. He didn't miss by an arrow. 
He didn't miss by two boards. Yep. He nutted everything. He's doing this with he's doing this like this. This is insane. This is next level stuff. He's a genius. He's an absolute he's a freaking genius. Real, real quick, Maz, just just to follow off of that. Why does Voss not understand that? Like he, he doesn't he's like two-handed. He's a purist. He's he's look at I understand his point of it. He's a purist. He thinks that there was there was a time in bowling that Look, it's harder to bowl with one hand than it is with two. Your rev rate is down with one hand. You have to be more accurate. You have to have more speed control. He came from an era about pre your of like what you consume when you eat, tape in, tape out, sweat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he believed he believed this this lost integrity of the sport. Listen, when the year when the resin ball came out, game over. Yeah. We were we were starting a whole new era. We were starting a whole new era. The game, you might as well just stop the clock and have a start over because that's when it all changed. And it's not going to go back. Now, I did say one time I thought they should go to four pound pins, but it sounds like the machines couldn't handle it. I don't know. Now I hear string bowling scaring me a little bit. I don't know. I hope it works no. out. Freddie said, it. okay, I don't know. I don't know. I have string bowling. I'm going, oh my God. I don't know if I'm buying that yet. Riggles <laughs> did a really good piece on, on the new tech for string that you might want to, I'll send you a link to it, but uh, it was. It's, it's interesting, and there's a lot of money in it. So, I mean, that is the future. And we just have to, like I said, from what to urethane, uh, from, from, from from rubber to, to urethane to, to resin, we all got to adapt. It's, it, we don't have a choice. Yeah, my, 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 my sister-in-law is talking about disc golf. She said she, she got a hole in one disc golf. You should have seen she was crying. It's amazing. <laughs> These kids today. Yeah. Disc golf. Yeah, okay. no shit. Yeah, disc golf. Kill me. If they get a sponsor before bowling, then I think we're in trouble. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, you know, now I don't know. I don't know. Gentlemen, I speaking mean, speaking of golf, I'm uh, actually going to Dad's Country Club with him tomorrow for a relatively where early you, tea time. So, where, I, where, I, where's I, he playing? It is his country club's called Bella Vista. It's actually closed on Thanksgiving, but uh, the owner is welcoming us out for a uh, foursome tomorrow. So, oh, um, when Johnny right. Triglia says he wants to play golf, he's gonna he's gonna play golf. So he's got a nice golf swing too. I remember yeah, it. He does. We played together. Mine's better. <laughs> John, thank you. I'm sorry I never showed up. What are you gonna do? It's all good. my wife says I would talk like a bottle of for pizza. the next month. I haven't seen you or talked to you in, in 20 years. It's a, oh, I God. still have a I synergy. You like, I still have a synergy in the garage because of, of you on the Erie show. I mean, I, I found a synergy because of the way you made yeah. that ball look. So I could talk to you it all was a great ball. but I'm just it starting was a great to get ball. <laughs> well, let's have you back on. Have fun on the golf. Let me know. Yeah, yeah hit me we'll up. Have we'll a Q and A together. session. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll get more organized this time. I won't just keep running my mouth for two hours. Wherever it was, I couldn't help it. I had a lot of bottled up in me. You guys got it out of me. <laughs> well, we got hey, your autobiography next time. This, we'll... this was the pop coming up. You were like you said. You're even keel, and then when the pop explodes, you're out and you're going. It's, good. it's like a Mentos you know, in there too. <laughs> she's gonna say you just never shut up. You never let him ask any questions. I'm gonna hear. It's already come. Sherry looked at me in the door, and she goes, "What are you doing?" Uh, hey, we're we're, we're, we're sitting under the learning. No, in all seriousness, no, we're we're sitting under the learning. We're sitting under the learning tree from a guy that's been there and done it, and watching you as a kid and the respect I had for you. I, I can't, I can't thank you enough for sharing your stories. There's there's so much that more that we get to get into, but uh, I appreciate one last thing, real quick. Yeah. yeah so this is gentleman I ran into at the Hall of Fame dinner. Uh, I believe his name's Ron Hinckley. Is he? Uh, he's. Um, he was a ball designer for Ebonite. Yep. Does that name ring a bell, gentlemen? Ron yes. Hinckley, for sure. Yep. Thank you. All right. He kept looking at me. Not the guy that shot Reagan. No, 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 not him. Not, okay. That's Lon. That's a joke. Just, okay. just, that's just my humor. Love that's that. silly. Hey, Ocho. Yeah. That's, that's his job. He's to do that. He's got to bring it in. There you go. So anyway, this. Hey, this yeah, uh, sorry. Thanks. Thanks. I don't Ron know Hick this. Go ahead. What was that? I was going to say thanks, Dell. It's Ron Hickland, who is also yeah, Rhino Pages coach. So let me tell you what happens. So now he's looking at me, and I don't know him. And he keeps looking at me. And he keeps looking at me. And uh, he finally comes by and says, hi, John. I'm Ron Hickland. And I said, now Bobby Learn just got done telling me that he was maybe going to go uh, and do something up there in Kentucky with, with Ron. I said, you're the guy that Bobby's been talking to? He goes, yeah. Oh, great to meet you, man. That's great. I'm excited. You know, Bobby's going to maybe do some stuff there. And that sounds good. And uh, 
He goes, I got to tell you a story. He said, uh, I was a young kid and um, I was maybe 12 or 13 years old and I was at a tour stop. He goes, and I was looking around and I was in the pad. I was by the paddock, just kind of peeking my door. And he goes, and you looked at me and you go, how you doing? And I go, okay. And you said, you want a ball? And he went, sure. And he goes, and I went, sure. He goes, you gave me two of your bowling balls. He goes, you know what? You inspired me. He says, I, I, I was inspired by you. And he said, I became a ball designer. And, you know, I learned a lot from Mo. He said, but I want to thank you. Dudes. That's gotta be forget about the freaking time. Just forget it about everything. It. Doesn't mean shit. Yeah. Right there. It makes everything right, right there. there. That's it. That's it. Wow. That's what Johnny wanted to teach me. That's and that's what stuff. Dick wanted to teach him. That's what it's about. Right there. So all these young guys out there right now, if you're on tour and you think you got it all Pay figured forward. out, Pay please, forward. please, when you're in your most lowest moment, give something to somebody else. And inspire them. We need to do that. It's really important. Heck yeah. Thanks, guys. John, thank you so, so much, my friend. And happy no, I was appreciate you it. and your entire family. Yep. Happy Thanksgiving, John. Introducing us to uh, it was Marco and Ava, right? Marco, we got Anthony, Joseph, Joseph. Ava, and Marco. Ava and Marco. A-J-A-L. Perfect. Yeah. We're blessed. Thank God. And, and please... Pray for my mother-in-law, Carol. She needs they our will. prayers right now. Please. Guys, God, thank you. All the love and prayers we got. Appreciate thank it. You. Thanks, John. Thank you. Mark, I'll see you on Fortnite. Wow. You know what's crazy? I know this. I'm just real quick to you, Rob. What, what's crazy about this is John's talking about being the 16-year-old kid peeking through the curtain into the paddock when my dad's walking out. And meanwhile... I was the kid peeking at John. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, I was the kid watching John because, you know, I'm a lefty that that, that hooks the ball. Yeah. John's an, a he's a Ginzo. He's an Italian, so I already love him. Right. And he's a lefty that hooks the ball. I look at him the same way I look at Parker and Couch, and like it was just just the. I could have sat here and listened for another four hours, but I think I might fall over if I don't go to eat, go eat the steak that I cooked like four hours ago. Yeah. But um, me too. Me too. But yeah, I mean, I, I could uh, I could listen to him tell stories the entire day. But but you're 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 sitting here texting me on the side saying that you live for this. This is like the greatest thing for you. Yeah. This is like a reincarnation of me twenty years later, because I was at some of those dinners. I was at some of the dinners in Erie. I, I worked with Fred. You're you're getting the brain. You're getting the brain trigger again. Yeah. Like, oh, I remember that. Was, Holy shit! That's right. Everything is cycling back for me, and I forget that somebody like Rob or you. You're listening to all this for the first time. Mm -hmm. so for me to sit here and watch dad and, and Maz converse, it's like, yes. oh, I'm just, just, this is like normal, but I forget that it's not normal, you know? And no, that was epic, dude. It seemed to be so for a lot of the viewers tonight, too. Is what a, what a wonderful guest to have on Thanksgiving Eve. Unbelievable. Yes. Yes. Really send out for humble guy, too. Like such a freaking humble guy, appreciative. Like just and he sent a lot of great messages to, to a lot of different wavelengths, too. I mean, yeah, for sure, for sure. And you could use everywhere. Like it's not, a, it's not a bowling thing. It's a he's life thing. Such really. a great speaker. He's a great speaker. I mean, he really is. Like he, Absolutely. he's a fantastic storyteller. And I'm, I'm, I'm amazed at what what we watched tonight. Honestly, I, 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 absolutely amazing. Yeah, and it's it this just talking. I mean, bringing back all the old names. He's talking about Mark Gerberick and Brian Collins and yeah. Denny Schreiner and Joe Hutch. I'm like, holy shit. I'm really, and I knew who one of those guys. My was. brain, I, I could see this. I could see the ninja with the one inch pin. I, I could, <laughs> I could see Norman Ozio throwing balls at the two pin to, to, to fuck him for the show. Like it's, <laughs> it's so, it's, it's surreal. It, it's, it's bringing back it and rekindling all of these wonderful moments. And, but, but what I think it really boils down to with John, at least for me, is anybody at any level can relate to the things that John was talking about. Being broke, sleeping on one and two, yeah, having, having to make the choice to go home and get a regular job or go out and pursue your dream because you know you're good enough to make a better living at it, having to balance the work life to the to the home life, and and then having your kid tell you, "Hey, Dad, I need you, I need you here," like, and then his his wife dropping the bombshell, like, but but John's adaptation to life and doing it with 
Nothing but raw emotion and commitment every step of the way is one of the most admirable things anybody can be in any walk of life. Yeah, that what he had thrown at him would 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 stump a lot of people, really. I mean, that's the other thing too. It's Absolutely. almost like the perseverance that that it taught, you know, him that, like the, the guy. That's why he passed his series seven. Yeah. You know, that's why he was able to hunker down and study for ten hours a day for Brazilian three months straight. You know I think I mean? if he didn't have that life experience prior to that, it, he probably would have flunked it. Honestly, I mean, that's just that that yeah. kind of set him up for that moment you know what i mean it's your back is pushed against the wall you can do amazing things can't you yeah yeah he had grit and moxie man he really did um, true grit and you can still see that spark in his eye which i love absolutely and grits that. for breakfast true grit john wayne <clears throat> rob what's my twitter i don't even care i really don't care at this point i'm i'm thankful rob, what's my twitter i'm thankful for for you guys seriously and and bringing back my love of bowling that, that was dormant for you years oh wait rob i'm sorry speaking of thankful guess who i'm going to pick up oh your doggy yeah is that the yeah, dog yeah, that yeah. used to jump that's, on you when you were i'm in... going to pick up evelyn in vegas on december 12th that's and awesome then flying, and then flying back here december 13th so um nice i i we're not gonna i, I am not gonna be on that show because i'll be in the air flying home Dude, order the Wi-Fi through the air, dude. How cool would that Christ, be? Christ, the least does it from a cruise. You can't do it from an airplane. What it's the like, fuck? Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's like it's freaking scary. five bucks to order the Wi-Fi. Scary, right? Here's the thing is I'm flying out of Vegas at 11 p.m. Vegas time. Uh, that's 9 o'clock. So you're in the car. Uh, yeah. And I don't land until 7 a.m. Thursday. Ocho. Dude, you I can't you imagine how happy the, the people on the plane would be if Evelyn <laughs> wakes up and starts barking under the seat and I'm talking in a headset. That's true. On a, red, on a red eye. It's probably not the best idea. We, we start at 8. This is 11. Oh, Vegas. Just go in that little fucking Nobody's, bathroom there. Actually, to tell you the truth, I may be able to. I may be able to hop it's on. Before, it's flight. before your flight. That's true. You know what? I think I actually may be able to do it. Don't cancel the show yet. Well, I mean, I wasn't. I was just going to have me an out to bullshit for an hour. That's all. What can do the bastard? Show it. <laughs> Del Picard will be in Aruba. So, yeah. Nice. Love it. Look, yeah, I really, uh, really, really, really need to go eat. I'm fucking That's sick. cool. Uh, Stephanie yeah, Sheridan will be here next go. week. She's on the cruise right now. Apparently, she couldn't broadcast. Yes, we're, um, I'm actually uh, my buddy Georgie, again, sweetblends.com. He's cutting my hair on Wednesday, and then I'm going to go home and do the show with Steph from the house in Pennsylvania on Wednesday. There we go for Georgie. Sweetblends.com. Look him up. Is. For fresh cuts, baby. Well, happy Thanksgiving, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Guys, happy Thanksgiving. Thanks to everybody for being here. Rob, thanks for another fantastic show. Thanks for the highlight reel. Thanks for how we do it, dude. We, we, keep, we keep getting better. It just uh just when you think you could you could top it. We just have another banger. So absolutely. Thank you guys. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody, and we will see you David. next week. Happy Black Friday shopping. Watch football. See you guys later.